Unified District Board of School Directors. Regular meeting, Tuesday, September 7th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. via Google Meet and at the Stockbridge School, live and in color. <laughs> All to order. Adjustments to the agenda. We have at least one. That's all I think we got. Yeah, is uh, that we need to approve a treasurer. Um, yep. So we'll make that. So that be. Appoint a school district treasurer. Appoint. 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 Another language. A point. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, could that be 3.2 or something like that? Sure. Let's make it get it in there. So 3.1 will be assigned timekeeper. 3.2, a point. Treasurer. And that's all set. I'm very happy. And I don't hope you know her last name because I forget her last name. Um, good. Any other adjustments to the agenda? Patrick or Justine? Or me. <laughs> Anything? No. Okay, nope. Justine. Thank nope. you. Um, I think we just need to. Uh, are we all good with changing that nope. agenda? Yeah, no problem. Robert. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you, Patrick and Justine. Good with changing the agenda. To add the pointing the treasurer. Patrick, yes. Y yes. Sorry, it's just it's tough to tough to hear everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, especially with the masks on. Yeah, that does uh, that. Justine, you're good with the change of agenda. I am. Good, thank you. Okay, uh, let's assign timekeeper. Uh, I think a point treasurer should take us five. Yeah. At most. Yeah. Approved minutes of Tuesday, August third. Let's give that five. Um, public comment. Uh, that'll be unknown. Board comment. Uh, do we have board comment here? Uh, Bill? I, um, I went and met with the select board the other night and had a discussion with them about the generator. Oh, um, good. Okay, is that, good. do you want to bring that up under 8.3? Sure. We're talking yeah. about? Okay, good. I can just um robert do you have any no just read by it if it good i don't think we have any board uh, justine do you have any board comment i do not okay so i think we're going to say zero for that reports to the board we'll give that 20. be efficient okay outdoor learning arc um i think we need to give that at least 15. uh planning our said board retreat, another 15. Uh, yeah. Stockbridge generator project, hopefully 10. Yes, Jamie? Yeah, I think yeah. that would be all right. Okay. We talked about Patrick. And Patrick, I know what he's going to say. So. Uh, Rochester High School plan for winterizing that. Uh, I'm going to give that 20. Tui tuition at religiously affiliated schools. What do you think? I don't know. What 10, that. probably. 10, okay. And you don't have to necessarily take action on that tonight, but I want to give you an update. About and the White Revive Players use of high school, I'd say, let's give that, let's give it 15. I think it's going to come under the same, the winterizing, actually, so, but it may, may take less. All right. Um, and then action items, I think we usually end up voting in our discussion. So I think we'll give that a zero. New hires, resignations, anything? Yes. Music teacher. Yes, we do. We do. So we'll give you five. Yeah. Oh, but come I didn't ask you, Amy, are you okay being our timekeeper again? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I shouldn't assume. And another public comment, question mark, and future agenda items, we'll say five and maybe get out of here. So super, just for super clarity, on uh, mm -hmm. I am the timekeeper, public comment is uh, is it two minutes per person, five minutes per person? We have actually never set that. I went to a meeting recently where they were doing three minutes. Okay. Um, uh, by the town meeting, I know it was five. Okay. So I've heard different. I think we could probably set it as a board. If you want to, or we can just leave it open. It, I just said it was a timekeeper. I think three is, is a good time limit, personally. I think it's reasonable, and we're trying to really trying to keep these meetings under. I think people can make their point in three minutes. Jamie, is there a policy on that? There's a policy. It doesn't specify time. Yeah. So it's something that we're going to look at the policy committee to see if we want to revise. Mm -hmm. uh, our public comment I policy think, could use some more gravels around it and things of that nature. 
I, I, I think three is good, and we can we can talk about that. Um, I think. Well, do we want to talk about that tonight? Is that something we? No. We have to <laughs> no. no. Whatever. Let's do it. Let's keep going. I, I was just curious whether. Yeah. Good. Yes, Robert. Just a, a, a comment about public comments is I'm glad to see that you have more. Oh, sorry. You have more than one public comment rather than just one at the end. Well, this was particularly for this. This was actually a suggestion from Tim Pratt because we had the high school winterizing, which has been a, a definitely a, a contentious issue before, mm -hmm. and that we wanted to make sure that we heard from people before we took action and then after it was. It isn't always that way. Usually we save it till after, but I think it's a it's been a practice that when we feel like there's something where we want to hear from people before we take action, we put a public comment before it. No, that's good. Yeah. Well, we should do it even if we don't want to hear from them. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. <laughs> well, you're right. Uh, no, I think you're right because it does. The thing is, is that the, the idea I know from about public comment is that it's supposed to be specific to what we've talked about on the night. It's not about necessarily bringing in other things. That's one issue that's been clear. So, um, in other words, they don't know what we're talking about until we talk about it. <laughs> but um, we can talk about that, and we can we can certainly make that a, a priority because I know you 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 feel strongly about that. You said good um, consent. Uh, let's appoint a treasurer. Um, do we have a treasurer? Yes, we have. Uh, we, we we received. Uh, resignation of our current treasurer and um, Becky, Klein. Becky Klein and uh, Kristen Lapel has Lapel. has agreed to step up. Who is the assistant town manager at Rochester, town, town clerk. clerk at Rochester. Yep. And I believe, yes. Yes. And she is willing to take it up, which we're very excited to have her. Um, I will entertain a motion to appoint uh, Kristen Lapel as treasurer for the RSUD board. So moved, so moved by Robert, seconded by Bill. I feel like an auctioneer here. Um, oh, sorry. All in favor, let's start. Oh, discussion. I need discussion. Well, I just thought, um, yeah. Do we need to specify in the motion that the treasurer has authorization to be added to specific accounts? Tara is on. She'll know if she needs okay. that or not. Yeah. We do have. Um, both um, mutual fund accounts as well, financial accounts and that aspect, plus um, bank accounts. Uh, and I do have a note. Thank you. Yeah. Ray, I was just about to ask you to do that. So we Hi, Dara. Hi. By your board yeah. taking action to appoint Kristen as the treasurer, you're giving her the authority to act on behalf of the board. The next steps will be that um, Rebecca will need to work with the lenders and change over the authorization. And that usually will require a signature letter in some instances, depending on the lending institution. So is it a, sorry, is that a case by case basis or a account by account basis? Um, I can't recall on White River Valley Credit Union. I think that's the one I needed the letter for when we changed. I know Amy had worked with um, totally spacing on your People's Bank on one of your trust accounts, um, what needed to be done. I'm not on that account, so I'm not familiar with what's necessary. Mascoma, it's just a matter of Rebecca reaching out to them and signing over the signature card. Okay, and, and that's the reason I asked is I have an uh, email directly from uh, Joanne Mills at the Credit Union that states, I will need minutes from the board meeting with authorization to add you to the account. So I just want to make sure in our motion it includes enough that she can be added to the account. The gist of what Tara just told us is we are don't, good. We, we're good okay. with just the motion as it stands. That's yeah. good. Good. All in favor, Justine, yes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes, Robert. Yes, yes. Yes. Ethan, yes. Amy, yes. yes. Bill. Yes. Sorry, I spoke for you. <laughs> you got to be careful. Of that. Good. Uh, that we have appointed treasurer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Becky Klein has yes. done it for a long time. Definitely appreciation of the board to her for all her um, conscientious work uh, for us. Much appreciated. And thank you so much, Kristen, for stepping up. Good. Consent agenda 4.1 approve the minutes of Tuesday, August 3rd. We have them attached here. Um, I found no. I 
I respond to no glaring yep. changes. Anybody else? No, they're oh. good. Yep. Um, can we have a motion to approve, to accept the minutes? I move. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? There being none, Justine, yes? Yes. Patrick, yes? Yes. Robert, yes. Ethan, yes. Amy? Yes. Bill? Yes. So approved. Very good. Our first round of public comment. Um, I don't have a list here, so I'm going to, Ray, if possible, if you could help me. Um, Karen Rubin would be the first on our list. Karen, do you have any public comment at this time for the board? No, I don't. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Lyle will be talking to him. Uh, Pat Harvey, do you have any comments for the board at this time? Uh, no, I do not. Thank you. Uh, Vic Roboto, do you have any comments for the board at this time? Well, you're muted, Nick. Vic, you're muted. Yep. <laughs> I love the muted look. I never <laughs> Different huh? applications have different buttons in different yeah. places. I'm sorry. Of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, I, I'd like to save it for the, the discussion around the Rochester High School plan for shuttering, if I could. Excellent. Thank you. Tim Pratt, do you have any comment for the board at this time? No, I'm going to assume not. Anybody, is that the last person there? OK. Very good. Public comment. Uh, board comment. Patrick's going to move his comments to when we get to the 8 3. So nobody's come up with any other comments at this point. Very well, good. Oh, yeah. I just want to say how great the school looks outside and inside the grounds, uh, the building, the structure that was the outdoor classrooms. I mean, it's just, it looks ready to go. And it's always energizing to walk into an elementary school. And this one's special. So. Uh, I just wanted to pass that along. Um, I will add to that. Thank you, Bill. I will add to that that um, I very much appreciated the open houses and going and meeting all the teachers. And um, I'm sorry I wasn't able to be at the Stockbridge one as well. But um, it was just a good, clear evening. And I appreciate that very much to the administration and to all our teachers who, who uh, stayed up for that. Thank you. Uh, no further board comment. Let's move to seven reports to the board. Seven one, superintendent. Hey, good evening. Um, so I've been getting out into. I was in both of your buildings on last Wednesday. I'll be here tomorrow to visit with students in session. I was at part of in service mm -hmm. in Rochester, uh, which was great on uh, last Wednesday. And uh, you're my last two stops. I know that Onda Adams has been in all the buildings already, which was terrific. Um, and so uh, by all accounts, I've been really impressed with what I've seen. Um, I've got a letter going out to faculty thanking them for all their, their work in preparing for the kickoff of uh, school this fall. It's clear to me that the work's paying off. I've seen really focused routines already in place in our, in our classrooms. I've been um, really impressed with our new hires um, and the energy that they've brought to the buildings. And there's been a real enthusiasm there. And um, I would say that just the focus at in-service was clear. Um, so that was terrific. And so, um, but with that said, we're still short staffed in some, in some places. Um, our side, not as much as other places, but um, we're specifically so short staffed with interventionists. And I've mentioned that in my reports. That is a certainly a statewide trend right now that's really concerning. Um, I know multiple superintendents. Um, we've discussed the idea that whether or not the agency would want to look to incentivize mm -hmm. special educators specifically to move to the state. Um, we do have a few special educators that are going to be supporting students virtually. Uh, this coming school year that we've been able to hire outside of state but are going to provide interventions and supports virtually. Um, they're not, there are contracted services how we've done it. Um, so, but with all that said, uh, just acknowledging that faculty have had to be really flexible. How many are we, how many are we short right now? 
Special educators, I'd like three um, to really be at the staffing levels the way I'd like us to be. You know, going into the summer, we would have been happy with two more, Bill. Um, the third for me is just that we've had an influx of students. Our numbers also across the SU, enrollment-wise, are as solid as we've seen them in a long time. Uh, Rochester is back up to 100 students, unless that's changed since last week. Uh, oh. Yeah. I know I got Newton's back up over 100. Sharon Elementary has classes of 23, 24, 25 wow. third grade. So in general, uh, we've had an influx, which sure. is terrific. Um, mm -hmm. Now we just got to get the staffing levels where we want it to be. And of course, that is an issue in not just education right now, right? Like I was at a restaurant the other day that was closing Everywhere. Everywhere. several hours early because they can't find yeah. staff. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the other thing we're going to look to do um, is to just continue to talk about with other SUs uh, is there opportunities to share expertise, right? Specifically, mm -hmm. when we think of special education, uh, we have gotten better at leveraging virtual. So if there's a place where we have additional staffing, you know, where we have some capacity and they may be looking for that or they have some staffing that we're short, how could we share in some of that? So that's just, something that we've started discussing too. Just to tell you, uh, Robert, fill you in on that. And Bill, I don't know if you know about this, that we're already sharing Ray with tech going to CBSU, CBSU and getting back from them as their business manager, yep. who has been mentoring and working along with Tara. Yeah, we have an MOU Tara in Weatherall. place with that. So that's been a trade off that we've done already. And so we're do hoping to do more of that. Um, can I just check from people who are listening? How's how's Jamie's? Can you hear him? Okay, thumbs up. Everyone's hearing him. Great, thank you. Just had some trouble with uh, one of the meetings before. Um, well, one question for you, Jamie. Um, oh, sorry, you want to? No, finish? that's good. And so, I just was going to wrap up by saying uh, it's really exciting to have kids back in the buildings. You know that 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 speaks to why we do this work. Um, uh, if I'm just uh, first, I just want to. I asked this at the SU level, and I just want to ask it here so everyone's clear. There was some concern about being uh, out of step with state law as far as how much special ed we had. Um, I remember, and I just wondered if you were going to talk to the. the no, we're, we're in compliance. We're in compliance. Yeah, I'm word. not concerned okay. with that. Okay. Um, okay. But with that. That well, was a concern a couple months ago. Yeah, no, we're, we are in compliance with our IEPs. Um, and what we're looking to do now is. is now that we've had students move in, mm -hmm. so we have additional services needed, that how do we look to use interventionists to make certain that we're in compliance with IEPs? So we may have less targeted intervention. Intervention for students not serviced via IEPs at the moment, but all of our students who are served via IEPs, those IEPs will be met and will be in compliance with it. Okay. Robert, you had a question. Uh, yes, when you're using contracted services, does that provide uh, creating any problem with the union? It has not. Okay. No, they've been working with us. Um, the, that's a great question. No, the union's been fine with it. They understand the staff's shortages. Um, and I would say we've worked really hard, administration uh, and union, to really make certain that there's open lines of communication both ways there, so those things don't creep up. So no, that hasn't been an issue. That's great. That's really great. That's really strong. Uh, you, Question the, the or, yeah. three short stack is uh, SU wide. SU wide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else driving around the state. <laughs> Every everybody everybody has got help on it. Well, and the other big issue it hasn't hit our side is I've got I'm very short staffed in busing, um, oh. and so it hasn't hit our side as much. But in general, that has been a frustration. I sort of alluded to it in my letter. I went out to families on Friday, mm -hmm. um, but that, that's been a bit frustrating. So I'm meeting with the transportation company the first of next week to problem solve that. Good. Of course, there are contracted service. Uh, further questions for the superintendent? Justine? Oh, thank you. Patrick? No, all set. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Good. I think we're good then. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to the principal's report. Hi. Uh, yeah. You're, you're way ahead of me. You know 
So included in that, there's quite a bit that's been going on in the past month as we got ready to open school and work open, which is exciting to have kids back. Probably the best part right there. Um, and we have lots of new staff members and faculty members, but I feel like we're starting to pull them together well and get everybody updated on all sorts of things. So we're all speaking the same language. Um, and I think it, like Jamie said, I think the biggest piece is our numbers have gone up and that's a great sign. Um, means people are moving into the area and we're starting to expand quite a few of our offerings this year. So where languages has started, which has been great. Outdoor education has started, um, pathways and some flex flexible pathways and personalized learning that'll start this week and really kick off for students as a uh, special. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'll no, let you no. finish first. Um, there's probably more. It seems like there's been a lot more, but it's been uh, great start so far. Good. Um, yeah, my two questions are, um, I, well, I'll say my son schedule said he was supposed to have library today, but he said he didn't have library today. Is there some hold up in library? Um, at, at Rochester? He should have had two specials today. Yeah, he had on his list. It said um, he had heard. library and outdoor education. Outdoor right. education, exactly. Um, and he did not have library today. So I was just curious if there was some hold up in That's that. News or to me. I will find out. Good, thank you. And um, and I didn't see art on his schedule. So we reduced the art position last year in our budget. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be on a six week rotation. Gotcha. So um, art will start for six weeks in Stockbridge and then alternate with the pathways position and some okay. writing. So it'll, they will get both once a trimester. It'll just be in short, shorter increments. Um, it, it, I, I think it would be useful to send out some information about that because we were just confused as parents looking at it. Yeah. I, I, we were like, pathways, is that art? You know, I, was, I right. just wasn't sure. And what pathways is, I think it'd be good to communicate with everybody so we know what pathways. Yeah. Pathways and also the outdoor education because I know there was some concern, particularly from some Stockbridge parents, about outdoor ed and what its use, what its purpose. Uh, and objectives are that I think it should be hurt. coming home Thursday great. from our outdoor educator as part of Thursday folder. Great, great, excellent. Thank you. Um, I have nothing further. Does anyone else have comments for our principal? I, I just want to comment. I really like the third bullet, the number one. On both campuses, a schedule for classroom has been built to implement 90 continuous minutes for literacy instruction, that includes reading, mm -hmm. 60, 75 minutes of math and an intervention block and a writing block. And I don't know if that's a repeat from last year or it's accelerated, but that's exactly, I think, what we need. We're okay. gonna be moving our, our kids ahead. So that's, 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 I'm very impressed with that. Um, let's make the SU question. By the way, let me get around and make sure. Uh, Amy, well, do you that, have thank you. Great packet, great, great information. Robert? Uh, as with all, all the reports, uh, sometimes I get overwhelmed by the acronyms. Uh, yeah. So this it, has uh, been my thing, too. So. Uh, I, it, it doesn't have to be in every report, but perhaps a um, a uh, cheat sheet. A cheat sheet would be one of I actually, pages. Robert, I, I make it a point whenever I, because Jamie loves the acronyms because he knows them so well and he uses them in his conversation. But whenever we're in public forum or in a meeting, I just say, what is that? And, mm -hmm. and feel yeah, free maybe, yeah, don't be to always to say, what is that? Because I, I really support that. I think we need to be very clear because most of these, I'm still trying to S back. It's still, even after seeing it written out the other last time. <laughs> Smart <laughs> about assessment. Yeah. And um, and what is MPSS? Multi-tiered system of supports. Okay. Which And we're going to do a lot of board development around that. Yeah. Okay. It's um. Yeah, it's something that I hope comes out in the retreat as further board development. Good. Uh, Justine, do you have anything for our principal? No, I, I think um, the report is so great. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see it, and uh, I wish you luck in the, the first part of school. Thank you. Patrick, do you have any questions for our principal? No, other than thank you for all your time and effort. Um, I realized they did it again. We do not have an outkeeper. Are we? Uh, so uh, I was going to add that. So <laughs> I've got a, I've got um, 
the record, the recording secretary for Tumbridge is going to do your notes. So we'll send a video and then she'll name? process them. Uh, and yes. You could say Mariah Silly. Mariah Silly? Oh, that's great. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mariah. You. Yeah. Much appreciated. She's not on here, but no, she'll, 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 see she'll, she'll see this. So. <laughs> thank you, Mariah. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. And forgive me for, I, I, I need to always make sure that we have someone. Good. 7.3, uh, business manager, Tara, please. Hi, everyone. So you have my report um, in my discussion items. I indicated that we would review your fiscal year 2021 year end projections. So prior to any adjusting journal entries that we receive from the audit, the projected surplus for FY21 is $4,723.66. I just I realize usually yeah. we get this as a printout. Yeah, she so. I asked her for, she said no, she's giving it to us in the meeting. Oh okay. okay. It's not in my yeah. report. I said I would discuss it tonight. Okay. Um I, I love those myself. You'll start getting the one sheeters again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we're gonna do the one sheeters quarterly. Oh quarterly. So you'll have okay. the quarterly one sheeters. Jamie and I talked and through so that. Good. Um and then if at any point you as a board want your expenditure reports, I can generate them for you just like I could before if you want them. But otherwise, um, each quarter, I will give you the quarterly projections. So currently we are working through in the business office all of the FY21 audit prep work that needs to be done. The auditors are coming to the office um, September 20th through the 24th to do their actual physical audits. So we are working through all of the general ledger reconciliations and all the additional fixed assets and all that type of work for the balance sheets that need to be done. Plus we just got through our first payroll of the school year. So that's always a big undertaking. And then um, this week will be payroll number two. So, so far that's running pretty smoothly. And then Jason has completed his week long uh, child nutrition training program that he had to do, which was a overview of all aspects of the child nutrition program. So he will start to take over all of the child nutrition duties that I was handling in the past. Yay. Which I'm Yay. very happy about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Good. then if you guys have any questions, I'll happily answer any that I can. Uh, one question for me to start off. What does the increased tuition do to our expectations budget-wise? The increased tuition? Increased tuition. We have like 10 more students at Rochester. So is that going to affect? Uh, well, are they tuition students or are they residents? Because we're not. They're, they're, over 20 more students than what were enrolled last year, and it's a mix. And it's a mix. So we we will get revenue dollars from the tuition ones, mm -hmm. and the other ones will help spread the per pupil spending. That's what I guess. That's, that's what I want to know about. Yeah, is how how that affects what we've budgeted for. We budgeted for a certain number of students, and we've now got more both going out and coming in to the our building. So I'm just wondering. It doesn't does, change our tax rate because that already went out. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just wondering how, how does it? Are we, are we short at all? Or are we? Can we? I will meet it? with Lindy, Ethan, and we can review okay. that. I don't have any of the spec, the specifics around who's coming in, who's going out, where they're going. So I will need to get all of that information before I can generate those figures for you. That would be lovely if we could have that next month. That would be lovely to hear yep. from. Thank you. Just so we're on top of it, just so we don't get any surprises. I mean, by all indications, if we were much more conservative with budgeting revenue, yeah, right, tuition, because mm -hmm. we were noticing that's an area where we were overestimating mm -hmm. and projecting. So I would say that if we have more uh, tuition students coming in than we budgeted, that's good. Yep, it means we'll have an increase in revenue. Mm -hmm. Um, and Lindy does a nice job on the expenditure side. So remember, for us to come out um, in the black, we had to work incredibly hard on the expenditure side because yes. yeah. the prior year's budget had uh, 
we had overstated the <laughs> tuition and COVID did not help, right? Like a lot of tuition students chose not to necessarily come to school right. and homeschooled. Um, and so that did bite us. So that 4,000 doesn't seem like a lot, but that was a ton of work by the staff and yeah. the administration. No, I, and I don't, I don't expect anybody to have this right at their fingertips. It's just, it, it caught my attention and I just want to know where we are just so we're over here. We're still, yeah, we know, we know where we are. That's, we that. were enrolling students Thursday morning last week, wow. which is always exciting. Yeah. Um, but so we still yeah. need a little catch up. Time. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We, right. Lindy and I will get together and we'll have that information for you for your next meeting. Great. Thank you. That would be wonderful. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Further questions for our business? Yeah. Oh, Bill first. Question. Yes. Thank you. I was going to ask Lindy, what's some feedback you get from those 20 uh, as far as um, why they are coming primarily to, to Rochester? Was it the uh, reputation of the school? Did they recently just moved in? Were they moving out of um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Suburbia. <laughs> uh, education at home. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, or was it just the, the COVID? They came, Bump. they left, and then they, they come back. Do yeah. you have any sense of or a, how many move-ins at Rochester? Do you have any sense where that was 20? Uh, it's a mix of both. Yep. Quite, or all of the above yep. is what I should, should say. There's families who were homeschooling who brought their kids back and i'm not sure who was more excited mom and dad or the kids <laughs> to come back um there are families who are new to the area and relocated and this, this is where the housing market landed them um and it was within their proximity of where their new job is or working remotely we do have some families that are still parents are working remotely mm -hmm. um I don't have quite as good of a read as the number of families who've moved into Hancock and Granville and why, other than there does seem to be some family connections. Mm -hmm. So they're more, and you know, older cousins have come to Rochester or, or other family members. So the, Roche the bus that goes from Rochester to Hancock and Granville every day is at capacity. It's nice. Awesome. Yay. That's, That's nice. Yeah. That's great to hear. Yeah. Great to hear. Well, I'm of the belief that I have a young family, I mean, young children, and I'm moving to a community, one place I'm looking at is what kind of quality education are they going to get? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, um, I would like to think that some of those folks moving in, it wasn't, I love the house, um, right. yeah. yes, but also the kids are going to be well taken care of educationally, and I think that is a, a blessing for the school, other kids in the schools, and also economic development for our communities. Absolutely. So, um, well, that's that's really good news. Amy, um, so on the topic of uh, the food service uh, last year, um, and again for this school year, the students are all students are able to receive free and reduced lunch, breakfast, and snacks, no matter w what their financial situation is because of like state or federal money, right? Federal. Yeah. So how how does that work into to our budget, what we budgeted, um, what we budgeted to as a food service transfer? Um, what gets covered with that money? I mean, is staffing covered? Is food purchases covered? What, I know that's just not um, a budget that we ever really see or a spreadsheet that we ever really see. Um, uh, how that food service all kind of lines up. And so I, I'm wondering about the, what that money is used for and everything. Historically, any general fund transfer that was made into the enterprise fund for child nutrition program was used to offset salary and benefits of the staff. Okay. Um, being that we moved, as you recall, food services centralized at the supervisory union as of July 1st, the food service interfund transfer will not occur. Um, it'll be an assessment billed back to the individual districts at the close of the fiscal year. Okay. And the money that uh, the state or federal money that we're getting, is that essentially just for the cost of food? Is it just for the purchases of the actual goods or on? Um, what does that money cover in that? That is for food and supplies is primarily the reimbursement that we get back from yeah. the 
federal and state reimbursement rates for each of the meals. And then also it goes towards your salary and benefits for your staff. Oh, it does so it's all, it's all, essentially all eligible expenses under the child nutrition program. That's what that reimbursement can go toward. Okay. The issue is it we we don't have enough folks eating to generate enough revenue. It's just, it's revenue and expenses, right? So right. all right. that money is revenue in your enterprise fund, right. which will go to the, the the SU. So that money comes to you guys, and then it'll be used to cover cost of food and salary and benefits. But the issue we have is, and, and why we're trying to find you know more efficiency, the most we, the best we can across the SU is, is that our the number of mouths that we feed, both students and adults, is not generating enough revenue to make up the difference. The and that's in a, in a normal year. And that's why I'm kind of wondering how this COVID year. I think it helps money us. That we're I mean, it, it helped us last year. Okay. But by helps us, it has us running less of a deficit in food service, right? I mean, I think what we have to wrap our heads around is food service is a losing proposition. We are going to have some type of deficit in food service. Well, she can make meals to go for the workers. Well, or, well, <laughs> and, or if we want to <laughs> fundamentally change how we do it, right? Which we haven't discussed. Yeah. Okay. But that, you know, that it, right now we have all of our kitchens open, like we said we were going to. Our staffing levels are the same. And so, you know, with that, are we trying to find some savings in, in um, more bulk purchasing as we move on? Yes. But at the end of the day, salary and benefits is the driver. Right. Okay. Um, I would also bring up the issue of food choice because my son looks at the calendar and says, yes, no, 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 yes, no, 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 yes, no, no, no. And we make the lunch. I'd be happy to pay, you know, save us some time in the morning. There was a couple options. But I mean, I There's just think, option. and I thought this was one of the objectives of bringing everyone together is that you looked at what foods were more successful while meeting the standards, but were also popular. That is the plan. And again, this is our first month. Yeah. Right? No, no, no. I understand. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you... yeah. And I was more asked not like where we're going, just was about this the state. So thank you. That no, no, you question. answer your, I, but this was sort of a follow on yeah. that I was. I was yeah, so the child it's nutrition only. team has met and they meet monthly and they have worked on a centralized menu and calendar for each of the districts without losing the specials that they did within each of their buildings and finding popular recipes and be, I mean, we're in the first two weeks of school, so they've done their first September menu and then they'll get together to work on October and November's menu. And that's the plan. And then like, like Jamie said, ultimately doing the bulk purchasing, getting that moved, um, it gives you a larger discount from the, the goods and services that we get from our vendors. And then also, um, you know, the continued professional development that we're going to be doing with the child nutrition team to work on those exact things, to work on recipes and what recipe is successful in one building may not be as successful in another building. So working together to try and get combined recipes, which ultimately ends up with combined ingredients to get more popularity in items. Pizza. Five days a week. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> That's all. all right. You know. thank, thank you. Thank you very much. No, I think you're right, though. So having some variety and choice on the menu is important. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, Even if you have a main meal, having other options, I think, is important. Well, and, yeah. And, and again, and I, it's, it's... I know there's the waste issue if it doesn't get eaten, but, but having the, the option on the side that can be packaged and re, be put out in the times. I think it, there used to be more of it at Rochester. I haven't obviously been in the lunchroom in a while, but I remember when I used to go and have lunch with them, there was, it was a salad bar, or a chopped veggie bar with a peanut butter. The salad bar was back today okay. in Rochester. Great. I don't Good know job. how well yeah, we'll advertised that was. Or... If it was a pizza bar, as I said, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Good. Uh, Justine, you have any questions for our business manager? No, I don't. Thanks. Patrick, do you have any questions for our business manager? I do not. Thank you. Robert, do you have any questions? Very good. Thank you, Tara. Uh, moving on, 7.4, the policy committee. Okay. Um, draft five went out today. Yes. Draft five of the anti-racism policy. Um, 
we've been having some very good discussions. Um, I wasn't actually at the one. I was away on vacation for the big one, uh, August. It was like Thursday. 18th. 13th. 13th. Yeah, that was a, a lot of people attended. There was a lot of um, feedback, a lot of discussion. And we went through, um, who's the man, Glenn? Glenn Wiley. Glenn Wiley, who's been really sort of the um, organizer of this, I think in some ways you can say organizer of this policy. Well, I would say that uh, the, the, the rep from Strafford, Mika, yeah. had done a lot of work originally, and gotcha. then Glenn, set, she stepped off the board, and Glenn has followed up. In Great. The steps. Good. Um, he did a very organized um, list of all the issues specifically that everybody had with the racism policy, and the last time we, met, we went, we went literally one item by item over those and came to full agreement as a board how we felt about each issue. And I think we had a good open discussion about each issue. Um, and they were, you know, very good ones. Is there a need for this policy? Of course, one of the questions. Um, why now? Um, things like that. Why not uh, anti-bias or what was that? What was it originally going to? Equity. Equity. It was originally an equity policy and then got changed to this. All these were raised and discussed and the policy committee said, we feel good about this with a few minor tweaks. And so now we have draft five, which has been sent. Uh, we said it's time to move it to the SU board where the SU will talk about it um, at their next meeting, as I understand, yep. in October. September. September, sorry, end of September. Um, the date for that meeting, just so I can, if people want to come, I would encourage any of you listening, come to one of these meetings and hear the discussion. It's uh, it, uh, it's the 27th. 27th. Thank you. The 27th at 6 o'clock. It'll be on Google Meets. Um, uh, but I would encourage you, I would encourage you to be at this discussion, all board members and anybody who's interested in the public. This is a this has been, I, I feel it's a very important uh, policy. Uh, it's also a contentious policy. Um, among among people who feel it's not uh, uh, not appropriate this time so i think it would be really good to have all of you hear the debate first on um and but i i think we're in a good place i'm ready i'm ready for the board the full board to look at this will be the process that they will they will look at the uh the draft five um they will then either move it forward or send it back to the committee those are their options I, I think we're going to probably move it forward, which will mean that then we'll come to the individual boards who will then have to vote up or down on each one of it. On it. Yeah, so just so everyone knows, it won't be worn for adoption by the full board in September. Yeah. It'll be worn for comment. And so based on that, okay. that will inform whether or not we need to do a draft six or not, based on the feedback of the full board. Um, and then it will be worn for adoption by the full board in October. Is the timeline we end up going with, and then it will come to all the local boards in November. So it'll be about thirteen months. In the but there were several board on the policy committee. There were several members of the policy committee who were like, "We're ready. We're ready for this. Um, we feel like there's been some very good." Jamie's been very diligent in um, getting in public feedback. Um, good. Any questions on this, Robert? I, I just want to say that. You know, in terms of expectations, uh, I've I've read through the current the current draft, not the most current draft, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it, it takes some getting your head around. Yes. Um, and um, you know, and I think there's been excellent work, but when the rubber hits the road, and when it comes to implementation, I mean, you're ba basically trying to institutionalize, you know, a, a very difficult subject and so please ex expect um you're going to have hiccups and you're going to have mm -hmm. need revisions in the coming year as you actually implement those uh, that policy you know it's it's if you consider it a starting point then i think that's probably the right right attitude yes i i have made this point that mm -hmm. i'm ready for it to be out there so that we learn about it um, another that brings up another point about it that's important is that this is really about um, this policy is about safety. 
Uh, it's about safety for students and access to safety and feeling safe. It is not at this point about curriculum or specifically saying we're teaching this or this or this. It's really about students feeling safe. And I'll tell the story that I just recently started interviewing some African Americans in the state for a show I'm putting together. And one um, uh, 20 something who grew up in the Berry school system said racism exists as a cut by a thousand knives. It's not a blunt instrument over the head. It's not burning crosses. It's uh, an assumption that exists. And he said it was very, very challenging for him. So I'm really working for that, for that man and for all the younger versions of that man who exist in the school now. It's very difficult for me to put myself in the plate in the shoes of a black man in the United States. Oh, yeah. Yes. I I mean I've I've you know my, my history has been a close close association and friendship with with uh, African Americans in the neighborhood and growing up and 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 uh, on and despite that I just know that the more I know, the more I know I'm clueless about it. Mm -hmm. And that's why, it's, as you say, it's time to get it out there and see if, it, see if it's actually successful. Mm -hmm. Further questions? No. Amy, Bill? Yeah, I just have a comment. I uh -huh. um, read an interesting blog on Vermont Digger, and uh, it was an opinion piece, and, and the author was talking about how um, anti-racism um, is so important for the economic development of our state mm -hmm. that if we're going to yeah. thrive we've got to attract and keep people from all cultures and all authenticities yeah. and the people that live here have to be open and willing and to whether uh, to uh, to welcome and to care for everybody mm -hmm. and so it was a very interesting perspective it's it's, it's more than what's doing right and protecting, it is, I think, an important building block. I agree with them for the future of this state. And uh, that's why I commend the policy committee and the people that have pushed this so hard is this is an important building block and it's well worth the effort, the five drafts and, uh, that you've gone through. Thank you. Justine, do you have any questions or comments? Um, I guess just a comment um, to piggyback on what um, Robert was saying, um, I think that the drafts probably will still continue to come, but bringing it out and as a piece to for, for more comment, I, I think the more commenting and the more learning we all can do will lead us toward like what, what exactly we're, we're looking for in, in the end all and, and where we can put ourselves, what, what shoes we can put ourselves in, in creating um, this whatever this document and and implementing it so i, I think it, it's great that uh ethan's ready to put it forward because th there's so much you can do you know theorizing and and hashing things out but um uh, uh, having it available for for more eyes and more people to discuss will be really helpful and helpful for me uh, i've read all the drafts and um i know i have a lot to learn but i'm interested in hearing other people too Good, thank you. Patrick, any comments, questions? Um, yeah, just bear with me. I'm, I'm actually sick right now, so I'm having a tough time talking tonight. But um, <clears throat> no, I'm just really excited to see this being implemented, um, especially considering I have a student right now uh, in Stockbridge. So I'm, I'm proud that she gets to be a part of it. Um, and it's, you know, it's just something that as a family, we we um, try to have appropriate conversations with with our daughter about it, and, and she's only six, but um, it's 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 a tough thing to navigate, um, even as a parent. So I I totally agree that that it's it's good that we're getting it out there, and I, I do see hiccups and, and problems along the way, or um obstacles to overcome but i i think it's a good thing to to start implementing good thank you good i think we're ready to move on seven five 
negotiations. Well, we, oh, yeah, we reached tentative agreement. Oh, okay. uh, and so, which is great news without going to mediation, um, which I think was a huge success. I think both sides, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, I think both sides felt really positive at the end of this. Um, and so, I just sent the uh, negotiations committee the final draft to review one more time with a fine tooth comb. Uh, Sarah Root, who is our speaker, and I read each word uh, <laughs> in the uh, in the new uh, master agreement and compared it versus TAs in the old one. Uh, there's a couple of little slight things that they that was fixed. Uh, so I expect that the support staff's going to ratify um, this week Ooh. or the first of next. Great. So if you can mark your calendars, I do need a quorum uh, for next Thursday. I was able to work out with the board chair, uh, Kathy Galuzzo, that will host um, a full board meeting special next Thursday for ratification. And then, of course, we'll need a quorum for our side, too, because you do have support staff represented in that master agreement. Uh, there's still two districts that don't. Um, that would be the but, 16th. 16th at six, six o'clock and uh, i will get this document out in front of all, all of you and um can that that'll be on google meets as well as yeah yeah it'll be both okay. and i will send this to you all the board members and then ask board members who may have questions or concerns to so feel free to reach out to myself or their rep before before and our rep just to be clear is bill, bill. and bill was great he was there the whole time oh, thank um, you um and so and then we'll, of course we'll also um Go into executive session if there's any questions at the full board mm -hmm. level and uh, we'd look to ratify full board and then do breakout meetings this really loves those um <laughs> remember last time it was kind of it, we've gotten better we yeah, had yeah, breakout yeah. groups so <laughs> we'll do that um afterwards how much time on the 16th i think if you could plan on for 45 minutes it shouldn't take more than okay thank you and you you got that patrick you got that justine Six o'clock on the sixteenth yeah. for roughly yeah. forty-five minutes. Yeah. Good, thank you. Okay. So just as timekeeper, everything is so very important for us to continue talking about, but we have spent twice as much time on uh, board reports. Board reports as in allocated. Okay. I'll I'll keep that in mind for next time. It's important. We have a lot of good stuff to talk about, so yep. I hate to stop us. No, I know. Keep us. You can also. Poke a pin at us okay. on a regular basis. Just say, okay, just that's enough. We're, yeah. we're, we're at this time. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, I just want to take a moment, Ray. Thank you. This works. You know, we can see people. They can see us. So thank you for yeah, making sure. this yeah. work so well. I really appreciate it. Um, good. Let's move on to 8.1. Art said COVID-19 procedure protocols and the focus on outdoor learning. The board will discuss next steps in providing appropriate outdoor learning spaces, including existing tents. Do you want to lead this? Or? I'm happy to uh, at least get it started. Um, Lindy, would you be able to scoot out just a little bit more, just so Robert, if we can see? I was thinking yeah. we tilted these tables at the time you did. Right, we're okay. straight on to each other. Um, yeah, right, we are. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so we have outdoor spaces for almost every um, grade class. There's one shortage in Rochester because we had a tent go down last year, mm -hmm. but we've had great weather. So, so far, the tent has not been the limitation of outdoor classes happening or learning outside happening. Um, but we are at the point where we need to and I'm open to ideas, find a way to replace the tops of the tents at the very least, because the canvas just will not hold much more. Like it'll be interesting yeah. to see what happens tomorrow evening when we're supposed to get some rain. I can tell you what's gonna happen. It'll pool the, and it'll start. The preschool pool. one I know in Rochester yeah. has been pooling and dripping through and about to rip out. Yeah, yeah. and um, same with one here and one yeah. over there. So looking for a company potentially that maybe just makes the tops of the tent mm -hmm. or a place that's not the actual like it's going to give us a heavy duty canvas because people really were out there until november the, the, the other issue that comes up with that of course is that the you know the, those are not strong tents right and even if you have a good tarp on top you get that snow weight on it 
you know, we'd reinforced Amy's right. like crazy and it still just went right. enough snow and those things are going to go. And if we want to save our frames, I think being realistic about when we're done and using, you know, the, the two, the four hard outdoor spaces we have. Well, and the other thing I would propose is just we slowly start to invest and in that there is someone local who has tents made and brought, and I know Bethel uh, Middle School, White River Valley Middle School, excuse me, in South Rope, and has used this person and had them. So they made tent tops? Uh, well, I think it started with rented and then they invested in some that were just for them. Right. Um, but at what point do we want to just be saving our money for investing into these more structures? I, I mean, because I really do I don't think... know what the cost of either, really. Well, I think it's worth the... Yeah. Yeah, no, I I, I think so. I, I mean, I... Because these structures are great, but you cannot put 20 kids six feet apart in that, like, we're outside the structure, which is fine right now. And you mean this is the green, the trust yeah, structure? The trust structure. Are not big enough for classes of. It's pretty tight. It's for not a quite. class of 20. Yeah. And that is six feet apart, even with the airflow, the extreme airflow coming through? Yeah, but we still have to be six feet apart to have our masks. Oh, that is, off. okay, outdoor. That is, I didn't realize that. Okay, okay. Um, well. Uh, so it's worth comparing and contrasting, I think, probably. I mean, as someone who spent a lot of time with those frames last year, and I have to say, I, I, I do notice that I'm not jumping into it this year like I did last year yet. Um, I, I don't know how much money I would put into those tents. You know, that's that's a real question for Amy. Um, like, get what we can for, if we can get another fall out of all of them, this is my... Suggesting Just because you're, you think you have to put so much more money into them. To yeah, then if you're buying tops, you're going to be looking at you know probably two or three thousand per top for a Which good quality top, and and then you do that for all of them. Suddenly you're looking at almost eight thousand dollars per school, and that's another yeah. structure. That's another trust structure. Could we get by with three trust structures per campus for the year with rotating? You know, well, as opposed to designating each class has a structure, could it could it rotate in, in three? Would that be enough? What do you need? I guess is the real question. You need you need structures through the winter, really, don't you? Um, I need fresh air, outdoor learning. Yeah, yeah. And and how how often how many classes are using these spaces? now and how many did throughout the winter last year and what do we see the, the need throughout the winter this year so throughout the winter we didn't have any space up and running last year okay so it was um, the winter adjustment it made was that folks were outside uh for 10 first. minutes ever 10 minutes every hour i think it was 10 minutes Thank every, you. 10 minutes every yeah. hour and, um, the, and it turned into basically a focused recess Time, right, was, like a, a nature walk. A, yeah, I think sledding was big. I know in Rochester. Right, sledding yeah. was big. Um, there are times of the day I can walk through either building and I end up outside because everybody's outside, mm -hmm. which is great. That's what we want. I mean, we are not even eating inside right now. Um, for lunches, all lunches are outside under a space. Right that now. will be. Oh, go ahead, Bill. Yeah. The. Uh, the hardcover that the structures cost. What are we looking at? Eight to nine thousand. Yeah. I think it's nine thousand was the last one that was and that's installed. That includes installed? Yeah. Does that how many uh, students does that structure accommodate? Well what can you do? Sixteen? Yeah. You could do about sixteen, but you get up to twenty. Yeah. Right. You can have them you can have more in it and have outdoor learning, but they have to wear the masks. Got you. Okay. So you could have, have more in there, but they have to have the I mean, still. I'm a little surprised we haven't really been using that front trust structure. I mean, our school year just started, but I know last year it really didn't get used a lot. Oh, well, right now there's a rotating schedule. Okay, good, good. Because I, I wanted yes. to make, and then again, I know that Amy has a designated space for herself, but is that something that should be rotated through by other classes as well? When she's not, when she's down at Stockbridge, could that be used 
clear the classes. Right, and I think that's the schedule that'll still be shifted out in the coming week or okay. so now that we're almost out of a week of school. Would you like two more structures for campus? Um, Trust structures. I think we have to have the conversation about where they're going to go. Where would we put them? I mean, because Rochester, I would say, take the place of those two structures on there. I, I have a question. Patrick. Yeah, no, I, um, I'm just kind of curious as to whether it would be more valuable to have two more structures of the same size or try to find a way to build a slightly bigger pavilion structure that could potentially hold more students if that's even a need. And and maybe in Stockbridge, the only location I could think of is down in the lower field toward yeah. the solar. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, just so you know, they did put up a 30 foot version of this. Okay. Uh, it was $11,000 for that, that 30 foot version, which I think would cover your 20 students that extra 10 feet. Yeah. Bill? Yeah, uh, two questions. Uh, is any federal COVID money available for this? And, or, and if so, yeah, that's um, what I would we would think. Because uh, we we're talking about safety of our kids. Yep. Yeah. Um, good, good way to spend it. And my gosh, uh, you know, we get a COVID outbreak and we education is, is jeopardized. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is whether our building reserve fund would be another potential source. It just seems to me this is a we could use that. We need to hear from staff um, what you need. This, and I, this seems to me there's a way to fund it. Yep. So just so everyone knows, that's that's we would use extra money to right. pay for this. I personally think we should put it into. I mean, there are some limitations with trust structures as they are. Uh, you get some wind, and the snow and the rain are going to blow right into them. And I think we need to figure that out. I think there was a lot of concern by Cricket McCusker, who was the engineer who approved the design, not to put something on there on the sides. But I think we could possibly use the tent. Is there and actually a lot of the tent sides are actually in pretty good shape that we might have to oh, find a okay. way to put that in there to cut down on some of the wind from the side. Um, I I personally would say let's put this let's do the structures let's give you something you can use and if you need in Rochester um, a thirty a, a, you know a thirty footer okay then let's let's figure out how to do that but tell us what you need maybe okay. by the next meeting say. If I had my, this is my, tell us everything you want, and then we'll figure, well, it's our job and Jamie's job to figure out how we pay for it. Okay, and what's nice about these structures, when I'm kind of asking this, is is it the fact that they are potentially movable in the future so that rather than building like a open barn that has just, you know, an open structure that has doors that slide open and shut, mm -hmm. because that's, that's not movable. Like, is that what why these structures are better? Yeah, they, they have no. There's no cement foundation. They're basically secured into the ground by their weight, the structure itself that holds them rigid, and also by the cables that go into the ground that are rated for three thousand pounds per cable. Much better than the cement buckets. Mm -hmm. Much more secure and safe than the cement buckets we were using for the tents. Um, I think there's, you know, these 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 as people might not know, these are designed by Ryan, Ryan Designs, uh, right in Rochester, um, they're still experimenting with some other possibilities as far as sides, you know, doing things like that. We can certainly experiment with that too. The idea, and maybe this is what Patrick's getting at, you know, do we build something bigger outside? Um, that's a, I mean, that's a very good question. And maybe that would be a reason if we did to Try and get our tents through a couple more years to save up the money for that because that's going to cost more money it's foundations it's piers whatever to hold it in place um these are these are you know take apartable and movable right that's one of the things you know, that is is nice about them Robert, i mean it's uh oh, sorry can i just sorry. get the robbery uh, just a, a quick one i mean based on the trends in uh, increase in student population, you should definitely be going for larger, mm -hmm. larger size. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, mm -hmm. don't even bother with the smaller stuff. Yeah, I, I, I think I would agree. I mean, I, I also think while we have the ESSER money here, 
and we know we, we've we've been very successful raising funds as well. Um, I don't see a problem with you know maybe two more structures for each school. One of them for if Rochester is the place it needs it for the thirty footers. Mm -hmm. um, I can show you the thirty footer if you okay. want to take a look at it, and so you can decide if you think there's enough space. What we would need, and I mean you know there are the designs out there. I'm sure Patrick probably has some concepts of other designs. That, that said, we could get this going soon yeah. and probably by snowfall, probably have more structures for it. Okay. If, if, if we go with the Ryan design, that is one of the benefits that they're right here. I don't know how busy they are, but I could find that out. Okay. Yeah, let's make it a priority. Yeah. Tell us what you need. All right. Dream, dream big, and then we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out from there. Good. Anything further to say on uh, procedures? Uh, focus on outdoor learning, but any questions about the COVID-19 procedures and protocols? Obviously, masks and masks. I mean, we are we are um, certainly taking a more conservative and cautious approach than the uh, guidelines that were provided us. Um, for example, the six foot distancing with masking. Lindy's doing that. That's not a requirement by the Department of Health. So I want to make certain folks know that. So it's not misconstrued that that's, I don't want someone saying to me tomorrow, that's not what was out there. So um, so what we are doing is is requiring masking inside. We are um, looking at each building as an ecosystem. So we wouldn't even consider um, looking at our masking um, current protocols of indoors until at least all students within the building we met an 80 percent threshold not just those eligible for vaccination so that is a difference mm -hmm. um, right so the, the guidance right now is those eligible um, so I'll give you an example like what it would mean is is if uh, at Bethel which is close by a lot of their middle schoolers are eligible the guidance would be that once the middle schoolers hit eighty percent, they could remove their mask, even though the elementary students couldn't because they're not vaccinated. We're looking at that whole building as an ecosystem, uh, and that's what we will do. I don't, in you know, in regards to when will there be um, approval for our elementary age students to get vaccinated? I've heard anywhere from January to the end of this month, right? And so, stay tuned. Um, we will work hard with the health hub to um, prioritize uh, vaccinations um, in our school setting and i'm um, still trying to work out right now with our current staffing um, as far as nurses how to get surveillance testing up and running um, the agency of education is sponsoring uh, weekly surveillance testing the issue that i have is that um, we got 10 buildings 10 schools mm -hmm and uh having yeah. enough manpower to do that weekly yeah. and then get it off yeah, and so the younger kids can't do it themselves yeah, yeah. so it, you know it's, we want to do it it's yeah. just how do we pull it off yeah. um and so that's something that uh, i continue to talk with the nurses and our COVID coordinator about i did um i know the agency of education just provided further guidance today saying that they may be able to help staff that that's certainly feedback that other superintendents have given them. That we want to do it, but we need the but we need manpower. manpower. Yeah. We just need help doing it, and so that's what we're trying to figure out. Um, I'll comment uh, just from our experience last year that we were fully masked. My uh, uh, sixth grader, I mean, she didn't even notice they have masks on, and not throughout the entire school year there was no runny nose, there was no <laughs> cough, there was no sore throat. By anybody, and you always, always throughout the winter would have something you would, and so. Well, and, <laughs> and then the proof of that was everybody took their masks off from the summer camps, and everybody got sick. Right. <laughs> like got colds. Yeah. Just yeah, got colds. colds. Like almost everybody I know, a bunch yeah. of colds went through the towns. So it's so it's it is very a, effective. It's it's very healthy. Yeah. Robert, uh, is the surveillance testing a, a sampling sort of testing, or is that what? So Random you sign testing? up to get, yeah, so it's weekly COVID testing. Um, of everyone? Not of everyone, those who opt in. It's an opt-in okay. Okay. for staff and students. Last year we did staff monthly, about monthly, I think. Um, that we could pull off. But when you add students and then you add the weekly, 
What sort of percentage do you think you were, you're sampling? I mean, How, percentage of staff we were sampling? Or percentage of everyone, of the ecosystem? Uh, that I would expect if we did it. Mm -hmm. um, no schools, not many have started off yet. So it's hard for me to say data wise. I will tell you that our staff percentage was about, it depended on the building, but it was close to 50% um, that we were doing last year. And so it did trail off as people got vaccinated. That's where, that's where we started. And I don't know necessarily how many students. It's something that I've talked with Shane about. Maybe we start by surveying mm -hmm. to see the number of students we're actually talking about. Um, was that, that would rapid? help me better set, get a sense of the manpower I need. Was that rapid test or no, no it was PCR? No, yeah, no, yeah, PCRs. And, um, you know, you have to package it. You got to print the labels. You box it all up. I mean, there's there's several steps to it. Mm -hmm. um, forgive me if I didn't see this, but have you put out a reminder of what the protocols are if a child or a staff member is found to be positive in a classroom? Just a reminder so we know that is it still the isolation policy of the class? Oh, yeah. Keeping we, the rest of the school. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Last year, we just went remote with the whole school. Mm -hmm. That process would be different this year. Okay. What I talked about is, is that we will have classes go remote. Mm -hmm. um, but unless we felt like there was a situation we had, you know, several students positive within a building, yeah, and course. we may say we're hitting pause like we used to last year. Mm -hmm. Our process last year was if we had positivity within the school, we just paused the school for a minimum of three days contact traced and then started back up but we will do now if we do that right now we can't count those as student days like a snow day you have to have 51 percent of your students in the building um, to count it as a student day so what we would do is we would go remote with a grade level of if we had positivity within the school and it could be multiple grade levels and we would still meet that threshold um, for attendance um, while the other students are remote. Let's hope we never get there. Um, there is, uh, I have colleagues that have gone remote with the whole school. Right now there's no waiver to allow that. Um, and my sense is, is unless, one, the legislature could take action on this, mm -hmm. they're the ones that can provide that permission. Of course, they're not in session or if the governor went back into a state of emergency, that would authorize the Secretary of Education to provide that permission. But right now, we're not in a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. um, so the Secretary can't authorize that. So I've got some colleagues that I frankly think have rolled the dice and just said, no, we're gonna go remote. Um, you know, what- And if, basically say to the state, hey, call us no days, but we're, we're well, the issue that we have with that is, is that we're part of a master agreement. We're a bargaining unit, right? And so if I got people working and we don't count those as student days, then we would have an issue on the other end where I'm coming to you and saying as a board, we owe people now per diem money in order to meet the minimum requirements for student days work. So those are all things that are going into this. Yep. Uh, here's what I, what I will say is that we're going to do what we think we need to do to keep people safe. So if that meant we're just even not saying we're gone remote as a building, like we're just gonna go COVID day for two days now because we don't have authorization to go remote, then that's what we would do. And we'll have to make those up on the other end or mm -hmm. we put those in place of some in-service days. The union worked with us on that last year. So we'll, we can figure that out. All right. Good. Or is the VSDA working with us to make the governor aware of these problems? Yeah, no, I think, yeah. I think that there's been a lot of, advocating from the VSBA and also the Superintendents Association. I know that two superintendents spoke out again today. Uh, it was on CAX speaking to the fact that we could use some support and some more tools to navigate this. I mean, we had a lot more support to navigate it last year. Because of the state of emergency. Because of the state of emergency. Yeah. Like being able to be pause and just go remote. Yeah. Great. Good. Further questions? Yeah, I have a question. Justine, um, yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to ask Jamie what the protocol was for communication if there's a positive. Um, ha, will the whole class 
know about that? Will the whole school know about that? Will all the we would, we would notify the whole school like last year, our same procedure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. There's a COVID team that meets. You'd get a call from a principal. You'd get a letter from me. Those that are close contacts will get notified by one of the members of the COVID team. Uh, and certainly our communication would let folks know if their actual class is going on remote. Thank you. Patrick, questions for this? Are you all good? Uh, I, I guess I just got one kind of piggyback just means, but um, I know that uh, we, we have a local daycare provider that our two-year-old goes to and um, our other daughter who's in kindergarten, you know, on vacations, whatnot, she'll, she'll go, uh, she'll go there as well. And that one daycare provider is, is going to have um, four different school districts that she's dealing with this year. Um, so, you know, she, her, she's implementing her own protocols basically because of that, um, where, where if the kids do go there on vacation, they're going to have to wear a mask. Um, but I think, you know, if there is a situation or an outbreak in uh, one of the schools, you know, will parents be told timely enough that say it, it happens like last year, I know that one was literally just before, during one of the breaks. And, uh, you know, as a parent, you need to know, we need to know in order to tell the daycare provider so it doesn't start spreading to other school districts and whatnot. Um, I just know that that's a concern for, for other parents that even have children in, in daycare that don't yet have a, 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 a child in the school system. So uh, I just, like, again, everybody needs to feel safe. So I just want to make sure that that can be done quickly enough. So all contact tracing falls on the school. The Department of Health does not help us with that. Um, that's, we're expected to do that. And what I would say to you is, is that anytime we have positivity last year, we were able to notify folks within, before the next day, right? So if we got a notification one night was at 6 p.m. We were able to notify everyone by the next morning. So that's where that team, comes into play, yeah. you have to interview folks, right? So part of it is interviewing the students, uh, specifically the older they get, the more we don't always know where they are after school hours as well, right? So that interview is important. But as soon as we know, we notify, and that's why we used to pause and just go remote. So again, if we knew we had positivity, that's why we would pause a grade level. Doesn't mean everyone's a close contact, right? We're going to keep them out of the building, notify them that they could have been, and then we contact close contacts. Um, the issue that we've had in the past, though, of course, is you notify all the close contacts, but then a close contact's positive. Well, I don't find that out until several days later. Mm -hmm. And that close contact may have other close contacts that weren't in their first batch. And that's where folks can get frustrated about why am I finding out now? six days later when you originally had an event six days ago well it's because it wasn't the initial positive person yeah that was your yeah. contact it's a close contact no, it, of that it's just diff difficult to trace that's for sure yeah but yeah no we try that we try to uh jump on it immediately um and get that information out now i'm at a board meeting tonight there could be something going on but i have people that take care of it um not just me but I assume that it's a privacy issue that you can't just blast it out to tell you doctors who it is. to say so and so is tested positive. Everybody no, no, I, I don't. I don't think anybody's names should be be used. I, I don't think that that that's relevant. Good. You feel satisfied there, Patrick? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. I have another right. question. Sorry. Yeah, is there a situation nope. where um, uh, you know, the Board of Health may uh, direct you not to announce a positivity that's been in the school? Like no. if there hasn't been any close contacts or? 
because I, you know, I, I heard through the grapevine of the uh, positivity at the open house, and I, I didn't hear anything from the school about that. Now, the open house would never notify us not to announce positivity. Okay. If there's positivity in the community and the person was never positive at the school, we're not going to announce it. I get it. Yep. So it's about That's time, not just like you were share. talking about before with Patrick. It's a timing issue. It's a timing issue. Okay. That. I, mean, I think it's important to know that we've got community transmission occurring right now. Um, that's just the case, right? So I can't announce anytime there's a positive case in the town, but certainly if there's a positive case and it's been positive within the school community, that's when you're going to get a phone call. That's when you're going to get a letter. That's Regardless when of close contact, just the positivity is will be announced. Well, if it's within the school, there's going to be close contacts more likely than not. Right, meaning yep. students teachers not parents of students mm -hmm. right right okay thank you so the key for us is was someone um, able to pass on the virus while they're in the school community that's what we're looking at yeah. so that's what we consider positivity within the school community persons found to be positive for covid and they were in the school community when they could pass the virus on great Thank you for clarifying that. Oh. So no. Oh. No, what a world we live in. Well, well there's scary. lots of you know questions around the community about this stuff. So if we can hash it out, we're in a situation yeah. like no, this. No, that's good. And, and I'd encourage you, I'll try to remember that question when I do those questions and answers, because that's a good one for me to try to address. Yeah, I love those yeah. questions and answers, yeah. by the way. Thank you for doing that. And I have one quick question. Um, so with, with that being said, just, I'm just trying to understand this and, and I know, you know, um, so basically I'm just thinking what if a parent or a sibling that's not in the school ends up to find out they test positive. I mean, obviously the family should be doing their due diligence, keep everybody home. Um, but it, I guess, is there anything surrounding that scenario that, that needs to be understood? So if a parent tests positive, the student would then be forced to quarantine. Student would get mm -hmm. tested. Student comes back positive. We work then with the Department of Health to trace back when were they contagious. Mm -hmm. If the student was in the building during being contagious, that's when we notify you. That's when we would go remote with certain classrooms, and that's when we start to do close contact identification okay. i think it's important to remember what we were talking about last year um mitigation we're doing yeah it's, right. it's it's our best this is the best we can do it's not mm. foolproof there's going to be variances there's going to be examples we haven't even thought of and i think somehow we might think that it's foolproof and it's not there's always going to be well, we might know that for three days and they were in the school and maybe they, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's mitigation. It's the best we can do. And it's why these outdoor spaces are very important and why we should get going on them as soon as possible. Um, because that's what kept us healthy last year was getting our kids outside. Um, I really believe that. Um, and being diligent with masks and hand washing, which we are. It's not gone. You know, I think we're really, in some ways, we're a lot wiser but we're really in the same place we were last year. I just, I hope there's a lot less fear in some ways because we've been with this, but it's, it's, I, I think we have to let go of the freedom of the summer a little bit and, and be realistic, but it is mitigation. It is the best we can do. I want to piggyback on that and point out what a great set of campuses we have for outdoor learning and how lucky we are compared yeah. to some other schools who, have different environments that might not lend themselves to this kind of learning. So it is kind of a beautiful thing amidst this chaos. And I think a great place to spend, as Bill yeah. said, a great place to spend money is making the outdoors even more attractive for us and more usable. Good. Are we ready to move on? Yes. Everybody? I think we've blown this. Yeah, I'm keeping that up. Oh, of course. twice over again. Yeah. Twice over, yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, I was wondering if we could do eight two and eight three, and 
we've got Gemma waiting here for us. And I just hate to have to, because there's going to be some talk about, and I know shuttering and winterizing is a big thing, but that to relate to the players. I wonder if we could move 8, 4, and 8, 6. Can. What? Uh, oh, move 8, 4, and 8, 6 below. Uh, no, up. Uh, up. So that we oh, could get to them. First. Yeah, just okay, so that planning sure. for the retreat and the stock yeah. generator project yep. could go course. later. Are we all okay with that? Yes. Just because yeah. we, uh, you don't see, I don't know if Justine, you see, or Patrick, but we have a representative, General Seeger, from the Barber Valley Players. And um, I just don't want to, because we've got some discussions to do here. Um, yeah, so we will move then, if we're good, we would then move to 8 4 and then go right to 8 6 after that. Because yeah. then I think we need to we need to discuss eight four before we can discuss yes. eight six. Yep. Because eight four relates to eight six. Yeah. Good. Any objections? No. There being none, we'll go to Rochester High School plan for shuttering or winterizing for the 21-22 school year. And Lyle, um, Lyle, is there any chance you could get some light on your face? We can't. <laughs> I'm not sure. This is my <laughs> wife's COVID teaching den, but. Um, I'm not good with the lighting here. Okay. Like your fan, you've got to shut that uh, light off. Like shut that light off behind you. Is that possible? I don't know. I can I can just see you. I mean, you know. All right. Let's see. But if not, we'll just, just go, go ahead. ahead. Let's go ahead. What have you got for us? So Thank you for being with us today. I've I've talked to quite a few colleagues about um, what the ramifications of, of taking and turning off the heat and electricity to that building are. And my gut feeling was, you know, going in the same as it is uh, coming out of all those conversations is that um, whoever ends up with that building, if we do choose to let it get um, room temperature, which obviously could be well below zero in the Vermont winters, is not going to have much of a building left. Um, if you drain those boilers and you drain those sprinkler pipes and you drain or try to fill the domestic water with glycol and so on and so forth, um, you're going to have major problems when you turn everything back on. Your, your septic system could be frozen. Your traps underground, if not treated properly, would be frozen. Um, your foundation will heave. Uh, likely and cause all sorts of structural problems um, and I I just don't feel good at all about saying yeah you'll save some money on oil heating you know not heating the place but I'm also concerned and I haven't heard back from Visbit but I have a call into them also about you know how they feel about ensuring a, a building that has no fire protection because there's no water for sprinklers there's no power for fire alarm systems um, and no way, you know, for the fire alarm system to call out if there's a problem. Um, it's just a bad, bad idea um, if you want to maintain any value for that building, in my opinion. Um, right. I've talked to Norm Metkind, who you probably have heard of before. He was the former school energy management uh, person at the Superintendents Association. He completely agrees with me. I've talked to Derek Madden, who's a, a, an amazing plumber, um, which is also my background, uh, and he just shakes his head, no, 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 don't do that. It's just huge problems. Um, so I cannot, in good conscience, tell you to, to not try to maintain some minimal level of heat in that building. Having said that, um, who is going to ultimately end up with this building should know that and know that there's a cost associated with that and perhaps help to 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 heat that yeah. in my opinion that that's not up to me um i can tell you that um we've we're going to look at having uh, the pneumatics controls person that had serviced that building in the past take a look to see if there's any other way we can stop uh, any fresh air from coming into that building, which means cold air, um, so that we really button it up it, it, tighter than it has been, obviously. Uh, the reason is the old heating systems have a minimum amount of fresh air that they allow into the building because it's typically occupied. Um, you could mitigate that by boarding up the outside air louvers and just bring no fresh air into that. But 
again, that means it's unoccupied, especially in COVID times. Um, if you're thinking about having anybody in there, uh, you have to you have to rethink that strategy. Um, well, but, just it cannot be done zone by zone. Or I believe it can. Yes. Yes, I think you could. You, you can, and that's why we're having the controls guy go there and take a look at you know how those dampers are operating and where their minimum settings are, and whether it's cheaper to just disconnect the the, the louvers and you know jam them closed from the inside or just board them up from the outside and then leave some areas still functional, which you can do with the pneumatic system. I, I'm I'm guessing he can figure out a way to do that. So if you were going to use the auditorium, for instance, you would have to look at it from that approach where you could still provide uh, lots of fresh air for a space of that size. Um, so there, sir, there are things that we're looking at right now to see if we can get better control, how much fresh air we bring into that building, which ultimately means how much cold air we're bringing into that building. Okay. Good. So, so I then we got. It seems like we have sort of two decisions here to make tonight. One is um, yes, no to this mothball. Um, part of this goes with what Vic's about to tell us too, which some of us have already seen, which is that the estimate, the grant timeline is much longer than we expected. Um, in other words, the work will not be done till well into the second half of next year. Um, if I'm right about that, Vic, would you like to speak right now, Vic, and add that in? Get that clear for us? Yeah, thank you. Um, and also, Catherine, who's uh, my co chair on this project, she's on the phone on a number that ends in 2 4. I don't know if, if Ray needs to unmute her or if she can do it. Oh, yeah, no, I see. She can, if she does star six, she can unmute herself to talk. If she presses star six on her phone, she can unmute to talk. Okay, well, she should be listening in, so I hope she'll, she'll do that. I wanted to speak okay. to um, one specific aspect of this whole <laughs> difficult issue, um, and, and that is the, the timeline and, and the approval we would need uh, from the school board in order to uh, obtain the grant. Um, I recall last spring when we applied for the uh, uh, it was a community development planning grant uh, and uh, put a lot of time into it. Uh, we were successful. We got the grant award, though there is a condition of the grant award that we had to obtain formal um, authorization from the school board to allow access to the building during the life of the project. And at that time, uh, the school board approved uh, for a year, for April 7th of uh, 2021 to April 7th of 2022. There's a the letter and then there's the, uh, the what's, called, what's called the licensing agreement that goes along with that. So we, uh, and we're very, certainly grateful because uh, without that, we would not be able to, to uh, get the grant. So we got the uh, grant was awarded. We moved immediately to write a RFP. We, uh, uh, for uh, consultants. We've got an excellent consultant um, who's been down this road many times before, both in Vermont and in rural uh, New York State. And um, it was uh, a bit of an eye-opening to better understand what it takes to do a project of this scope. And uh, I did share with Ethan uh, the, the project scope and timeline, so you, you have that, that detailed information. But uh, uh, I think, you know, it's not something we could foresee last spring, but rather than this project being a six-month project, it turns out to be a nine-month project uh, based on a significant experience that this consultant uh, brings to bear. And, you know, as, as difficult as it is, we appreciate knowing the reality as opposed to uh, not knowing that. Um, so uh, that forces us to come back to the school board uh, tonight uh, to ask for approval for extension of that uh, letter and licensing agreement. You know, if if he, he starts at the you know, mid to late September, then we're talking about mid to late June to finish up that, that project. Um, so we're asking tonight for approval to do that, and then we'll need to go back to the uh, select board next Monday 
and discuss this and, and uh, uh, see if they would agree to that extended timetable too, because our, our desire was to have this all done in a way that we could present to the town in the spring and get a decision and, and get this you know decision behind us. But uh, it's just not feasible for us to be able to do that. And that's, that's why I'm back tonight on, on that point. Um, well, one thing, Vic, I realized what you said is that actually that clarifies for us. We've already made a decision <laughs> because we've given approval for access. I need, I need to read over that approval. Letter. Well, I'm just saying, but, but I don't in, know what the in principle, is. in principle, and he, Lyle just said, you don't let anybody in that building if you shut off the HVACs and if we've given them access till April. I just need to read over the letter. Okay. I don't remember what it specifies. So I'm just... But I, I think that is, I and mean, that's what I'm hearing anyway tonight. So it does the sound letter, like the, the letter said that there, there's a like a four or five page agreement that goes with the letter. It's, it basically says that the um, the town is given permission to enter the building for the purposes of the uh, feasibility study. So the, the, there's consulting architect and engineer. They need to take measurements. They need to visually examine the condition of the infrastructure and all that because part of their Scope of work is to give us a a, a plan for uh, facility improvements that would be needed in order to put the program uh, content into effect. You know, we're not. They we're not, can't use. They can't use the engineering study, which did that exact same thing. Well, they have that, and and but you know, there are that wasn't that long ago. With that as well, and and there's uh, space plan as well. So. Part of the program concept is to have an adult daycare center, to have a, 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 a child daycare center, uh, and the, the educational, you know, adult education and uh, other related programs. So the purposes of the assessment are for those programs, not to turn it into a school building. And so it's a little bit different. And, you know, that's not something they need access to all the time. They just, you know, certain days I'll need to get in there and look and. There's only so many hours in the grant for them to do that. So, so anyway, so that's our, our request um, is to extend it to uh, end of June of 2022. Well, well going, going back to what Lyle says, uh, it very, I, I take what he says very heavily because, I mean, yeah. no, no, no. Uh, this, this is a building and we can't, this is an asset of our district. It's like, a three million dollar asset we we can't just throw it in the trash no um so how can i feel that we should heed his advice and try to do some more buttoning up but that would really be irresponsible of us to um do the potential damages to this building so I'm, I'm somewhat beyond that actually okay. um, i'm i'm already at the point of uh, what lyle said which is, uh, this isn't a matter of that anymore, it's a matter of who's paying for it. This is really about who's paying for that heating, for me. And uh, what I, I feel very strongly that we cannot ask the Stockbridge voters, after the promise we made of September, shuttering it, that we can ask them to pay for this asset that is no longer of any use to them, uh, but is only potentially of use to the Rochester town. So I think we need to know how much it cost to heat it last year, what portion of that could be broken out to be stock bridges. And this is, I'm proposing this to everybody. And that uh, at least that amount is raised by the town of Rochester or by the Envision Rochester group or anybody else to supplement this. Because I do not think we should be asking to uh, to heat this thing one more year, I think it's fair enough to ask Rochester to pay it, put the bill for it. And we do have money on the budget to shutter the building. To shutter, but then again, that is budgeted. I mean, and that was something that when Stockbridge voted for this budget, they agreed for that money to shutter it. They did not agree for that money to heat it. So I think there'll be a lot of backlash if, if the money's used in any other way. I agree. I agree. I think I think it would be the worst decision we could make right now. I think we need to be and, very I mean, clear about it. Now, I mean, if if the town is considering taking the building, 
has there been any discussion? I know that you have, you know, you have all these dreamy ideas, <laughs> but you have to also look at the fact that this building is pretty old and there's a lot of issues that are going to come along with it. So at any point, is there going to be a decision to demolish part of this building? Because, as, you know, if, if that's the case and if that's even, you know, if that's, the direction they're going to go with a portion of the building, then that's something to consider. And, you know, we don't want to be heating a building that we're going to potentially demolish part of it. And I, and I don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's what should be done. I'm just saying if that is even a possibility, how do we navigate that? Perhaps we should unmute. Not Hardy. Well, um, yeah. Uh, well, but it's you know this is is really our decision though. I mean, it's it's really our decision about yeah. what we need to go forward. I think. Well, we, what we, what are the costs? I yeah, I, that's what I want to hear. Actually wanna, cost. What did it cost last year? What did it year? cost last year? Got it. Okay. Wonderful. Good. good. Tara, do we hear from you? Hi. So if you have the same utilization for propane this year that you had last year, we are looking at, I just had the page here, I switched pages, $26,504.28 based on our negotiated contracted rate for propane this year. Again, that's the same utilization from September December and March deliveries, if they're the same this year. And then the Rochester High School electricity propane. It's oil. It's oil. It's oil. It shouldn't be propane. That should be oil. It, it, it's oil. Okay, oil, not propane. Sorry. Yeah. Looking at Thank one you. letter word and saying something different. Yep. Oh, electricity, I don't have the cost on this sheet. If you give me a few minutes, I'll pull it together. So the electricity uh, in that building uh, also is um, uh, used by the elementary school, correct? No, it's two separate though. Two yes, separate but it's schools. used by the, uh, uh, is, does the elementary school have any servers, any phone systems? Is there anything that the elementary school uses for the electricity of the high school for? Plus the buses. So that is a district cost. Some of it, yeah. I don't know. How do you break that? Up? I know. How would you break that? Um, I've got numbers here as of FY21 19,787 for Rochester High School. Fuel. Yeah, fuel oil. And electricity for Rochester High School of six thousand seventy-seven. That's just from the annual report of last year. Hello, well, I mean, can I? So our negotiated rate, Ethan, for twenty-two, uh -huh. is substantially higher than what it was last year. We paid a dollar fifty a gallon, and we're at two dollars and seven cents a gallon this year, based okay. on pro, uh, oil increases. So that's Good. why we have the substantial increase in the oil. Electricity seems okay. to be trending the same. Can I see? This, this is Catherine. I've been trying to unmute her. I think I finally succeeded. Can it, can anybody hear me? Yes. yes, yes. Hello. Yes. You can hear me. Good. So so I just I just wanted to say something that I think is very important here, and that is that the repurposing of this building. And the acquiring of it by Rochester is not to just benefit the town of Rochester. The repurposing is for a regional uh, resource. It will have child care. There's essential need for child care, an essential need for adult day. There's an arts and learning center and making space, maker space. There's a business incubator space. And the point of the feasibility is to actually not only uh, consider the capital improvements and the cost of that, but also the sustaining of the building by these programs, as well as to explore better use of it if something beyond what the proposed program is, is there. This will benefit 
everybody in the Quintown area and maybe even beyond. And so I don't think we should just think about this as the town of Rochester's benefit. It will benefit people who live in Stockbridge as well as in Rochester, Pittsfield, Hancock, and Grantville. And I think it's wrong thinking to think this is just something that will benefit Rochester. The other thing is that with this letter that gives us access till April 7th, we have spoken directly to uh, the consultant and they believe they will be out of the building by April 7th. So even though the buttoning up of the feasibility study will take a while to get the very reliable numbers that we all need to know going forward, they will be out of the building by April 7th. And the other thing, and this is from the architect on our committee, um, Dick Robson, who strongly says that it would be a mistake to artificially apply a deadline to the consultant that would lessen the validity and the and the the veracity, you know, of his uh, report. He said, "Go with it and support it." We have worked. We put in hundreds of hours of uh, this volunteer group to come to this point, and it seems to me that if it will benefit everybody and we need to all really understand that we're in this together. Uh, fair enough. I will, my answer to that would be, we have made promises to the Stockbridge people after hundreds of hours of discussions and meetings about this merger and gone through a very, you know, a very divisive double, two votes and we have to keep some promises here. Uh, we have to keep some promises here about how this goes forward. Um, we all want to keep promises. We all want to keep promises. I understand that. This is not in any way to disrespect the process that the school board has been making uh, throughout this very long process since the merger. We understand that. And we, we are working so that the town of Rochester will acquire this building. But that you can well, understand uh -huh. why the town of Rochester why the town of Rochester needs to have the voter support and the voters need the information from the feasibility study. So it's, it's going on. I mean, we got a no, 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 I'm, not, I'm not questioning any of that. It's a very simple matter. We need some money. It's fair. I think, I believe it's fair to ask at this point, we have been carrying this building now for two years. Rochester is included in that. that Rochester is included in the carrying of the building. I, I understand. And it's time for, um, uh, it's time for some, I, I think it's a very reasonable request and the rest of the board will have something to say about this. I think it's a I very think it's, reasonable I think request. it's a reasonable request to too. For some money. I think it's yeah. a reasonable I, request too. I really do. And I will yeah. bring that request uh, to the select board at the next meeting. I think what I would like, what I would propose is that we have a specific dollar amount we're looking for tonight mm -hmm. and that we approve it and we approve a dollar amount we want. And it doesn't just have to come from out of this, uh, the Rochester select board budget, you know, the town of Rochester budget. It could be, um, it could be donations. It could be fundraising. Um, I agree. Uh, I agree. I'm just saying, I, I think our job is to be very clear about what we need to make this to keep this building open as the resource it will be hopefully for everybody but right now we have a promise to keep that stockbridge should not have to pay for this and i think we need so to do i that. i agree i agree with what you said and i do think it's a doable fundraising project i do so it would be very helpful to have a dollar amount that's the target for the fundraising great so let's say we've got we're looking what was it six thousand say it's seven thousand for electricity, twenty six thousand for oil. Um, I again, I want to say that I feel like the in that building supports the Rochester Elementary School. Is that true? Do we know if that's true, Lyle? Do you know if that's true? Well, Ray, what do you have? What do you have? Yeah. I, uh, I know the servers were there. I think they've been moved. Well, well, hold on, Ray. Phone system, server. The the Wi-Fi still on in the building, um, whatever fire controls there are. I don't know how they relate to the building. But so and the buses that the door control the buses uh, use the power from the high school. Is that correct? Well, I see that, but I just I gotta say to the board, if you sell this building tomorrow and the town approaches you for a dollar, 
I'm looking at Lyle and Ray to fix all those problems, just so we know, right? Like, yes, I um, I hope that there can be a discussion about it to make sure that, that you know that that is a need. Um, but I'm surprised that if we have been seeking to sell this building for two years, why we haven't done that? Yeah. I think we've taken some steps, right? I saw you over there with. Yes, yeah, stuff that easy. It's hard to split yeah. the fire system apart. Right. Right. So I guess that's my concern. If we're talking money now, that there the electricity does support the elementary school, which is part of our district. So, so I think from what we've talked before, that the twenty-five thousand we budgeted could certainly go to these projects, separating things out. That's what it was. That would be. That's, that's what it's there what for. So yeah. we've we've got money in the budget. That should happen. I think. I think we've already said that should happen by approving that money. Yeah, yeah. that's the point. So that separation out. That, that should happen. Let's should let's do, do that space. now. If we have an ex running costs going for roughly of thirty three thousand five hundred, what is I, 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 the only way I know of doing this is what is the percentage of the overall budget? Is it sixty forty? It's not that easy. Well, but I mean, we need something like that. We need a. Well, I understand. Time. I didn't know you were going to ask this question until right. you walked in the sure, door, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I'm just saying, what's a? Give me a. Give me a numbers because we 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 want to leave tonight with a number. I think it's fair to leave with a number. Well, yeah, I think Robert. It's... What I mean, but you're assuming a full year here on these these figures. So what are we talking about? Well, I mean, April is pretty much the end of the heating season, almost. I mean, March maybe, but we're really. But talking you're about, but you're talking about, you know, if you're talking this this number, you're talking about from this point backwards as well. You're talking a full year. Yeah, because it'd be July. It'd be July to July. Right. So you 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 you've got to take that into consideration. But this is for a full year. This is for for a full year. I believe this is and for a full year. For a full fiscal. Full fiscal. And which July, I think July, August, September. We're already two months. July, what you're saying is. We're already down two months. Right. Well, I've got building use. Again, I can give you these numbers because I, I can show you over the last two years historically what your buildings used each month. Mm -hmm. Right. Chris Riley did that for the SU, the SU Energy Committee did data. So we have that data that we can look at. But we can also just divide if this is 36 but and I, divide it by 12. I mean, that gives you a 3,000, basically 3,000 a month. Well, it's a lot more in the work. Well, your, energy, is, your energy usage is significantly higher. Yeah. But this is the full oil bill and the full electric bill just, for one year. I don't think seven thousand is enough. Is enough? No, I think it's twelve thousand. I think it's a thousand dollars for electricity. Great. I'm just trying to get a number here. So, as to, far as electricity is concerned, from June 2020 through November 2020. You averaged about four hundred and twenty dollars a month. Okay. Starting in November, your your electric bill then doubled. So your average, and I only have in my system right available at my fingertips from November through March. You then averaged about a thousand sixty nine a month. For just the high school, because it's on its own meter. Frame the pumps and the fans. And then on the oil, again, that was based on what you got filled in your tank in September, December, and March. If you had the same amount of gallons delivered this September, December, and March. At the new contracted rate, it would be at that twenty-six thousand five hundred four dollars and twenty-eight cents. So, just to clarify, what dates we are referencing on those numbers? Okay, uh, we got a we got a couple different things here. We have twenty-five thousand dollars in the budget, which was budgeted for shutting down the building. Okay, and they even said maybe it'll cost less than that, but maybe it'll cost more with this breaking out. I'm going to say, and I'm speaking for Stockbridge, and I welcome the Stockbridge people to come up and speak for that, that, that spending any of that money, Stockbridge would agree to spend any of that money to help with the division of the building. 
right? To taking things apart so these two buildings are separate. But that none of that money should go toward heating the building from the Stockbridge side. And I think we have to think about it that way. But you look at that 25,000 and you break it up into, you know, seven, 7,000 and, you know, what is it, 15,000 or something like that. Um, that. That's sort of what Rochester put in and what Stockbridge put in. And what we can you do with that money. And so that we can spend $7,000 of that money separating things. And maybe we can take 15,000 and we can put it into, I'm going to say this for a number right now, $40,000. Uh, total costs for that building, um, that's for a full year. So let's say, what do you want to say? It's 30000 to get through a winter? Uh, these yeah. are estimates. These are yeah. estimates. We need ballparks here. We're not, we don't need exact numbers. We yeah. need estimates. Right. 30. So 30 for a, to get us through to April, 30000 of which we, Rochester, can say our share, 15000 that we voted on for of that 25000 could go to that. But the seventh, so I think we're looking, so that leaves us then with another 15,000 that we have to raise. The ballpark, very ballpark, but it's a very real number, very doable number, I think. Yeah. I think, wouldn't you agree, Vic? Wouldn't you agree, Catherine? I think we could yeah. do that, yeah, especially if we got started now. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping to lower, we're hoping to lower those utility costs by, um, altering the controls and really minimizing fresh air into that building too. But didn't Lyle, well, you said, I mean, should people not be in that building, even if they're doing measurements and stuff? If, no, I'm not worried about, no, that's not, that's not what I call occupied. Occupied is okay. actually in classes in there and, and trying to provide you know, a certain CFM per student and that that's, that's occupied, the definition of occupied, but just having, I mean, it's a okay. huge space to have very few people and there's plenty of air. It's like being outside okay. of that. Great, thank you, thank you. That's good clarification. Sure. So good. Do we feel good about this? Does this need to be a motion of any kind that we were asking uh, Rochester Select Board and Vision? Oh yes. I have, I have a, something I need clarification on. So as an example, to move the phone service and the phone system from the high school to the elementary. Yes. If that leaves the high school building without a phone system, that's what we want. Well, no, because the phone system is hooked up to the fire system, isn't it? Uh, different different lines that do that part, but I'm talking about the phone system for the building, not the fire. I, except for heat, personally, again, this is me speaking myself. Except for heat, um, that is keeping the building viable. I'm fine with cutting off other services to the building. Heat and electricity is what we want to need to keep to keep the building viable. Phone service. All right, but you're you're just stopping the service, you're not pulling the wires out of the ceiling. No, to, you, to get the phone system to the elementary building, we physically have to move it. It will involve the phone system vendor and then a change from um, CCI, the phone service provider, to physically move the, their equipment to the other building. So there won't be a phone system in the high school building after this. Right. Correct. Okay. I'm okay with that. But um, if if there needs to be some sort of fire service in there, whether well, it does, if you're going to have it occupied, can, can I can I ask what the cost of that would be? If I mean, uh, because I think since we're presenting this to the the select board, uh, we would also like to have a total uh, clear picture of what is being turned off. And if the select board feels, for instance, that it's important to still have the phone service in there for the people that are in there doing the survey or in the event of some emergency that there needs to be a call because i'm not sure that there'll be wi-fi or that cell phone services will work you know i mean we have to really understand what the circumstances will be once the uh, as you call it the separation or division of the building process is happening other than heat and electricity robert I, I, I would like to just take a step back and say that you're talking about making these these changes, spending a lot of money to move services when once once the, the building has transferred to the town, the town the town will be more than happy to allow you to use space well, and 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 for the offset of whatever the electricity, which I did take measurements 
on on your systems was not that much you know so it seems like you're you're rushing to make to spend money to make changes that are not really necessary well it's you know. because it's budgeted for this year and i'm not sure we're going to be able to budget any money for the high school for next year we have it in the budget this year to do these kind of separation things in preparation of a sale that was the whole goal was to get it ready for sale to right. a private adventure in the past it was to a private possibly a private person which didn't pan out but now to the school um yeah. i'm just okay. saying we've got that money we can well right now it sounds like we're going to well, have it why, and, and why I do. And when do you? And when is the uh, the school vote? Uh, your when does you vote on the fiscal uh, year for the next May. school year? So I do in believe May. you do you do that in May, right? So uh, I'm hoping that we will have enough information by that point before the school board meeting to put to the voters of Rochester so that they can actually send a message to the. Uh, select board in terms of, of what they wish. I mean, we have to work within the school timeline and, and all this other stuff. There's a lot, as we all know, there are a lot of parts that have to be considered in all of this, but in the end, we want a successful transition in which the voters have said, this is what they want. The Stockbridge people are in, are happy that they haven't had to pay for what they don't, didn't want to pay for. Uh, but that we don't have a, a school, a building whose services we would then have to pay to just put back into place again. That doesn't make any sense either. Not with no, no. its adjacency we're, to the elementary school. We're, we're not going to do that. That's what we're figuring out right now. Um, okay, so we have two decisions. I mean, one decision is whether we're going to ask for the town in some way to come up with $15,000. The other is whether we want to spend some of this budgeted money to do this separation work. Those are separate issues, I think, right now. Lindy, do you have Well, to so I'm gonna defer to Ray and Lyle, but I do believe those services are gonna have to be separated anyways, because then we will be two separate entities should this ever happen. For example, fire system, if the alert goes off, we, Jesse and myself, get phone calls to let us know that it's going. We need to make sure that the high school has designated once that transition happens. It's not Jesse or myself. Getting a call. Getting a call. Right. You, you, the and, town takes over the stuff. Well, except right. but the service is still they there. They don't. <laughs> they don't take it over but until we they take to, it like, over. But we have to, like, close some of that out and move it just what we need for the element. Am I wrong about that? But as long as we carry the responsibility for it, we should be getting the call. Oh, absolutely. That was just one example. But, like, the phone services, I understand the wiring piece, but, like. So, so if. The complication here is that, and these numbers are very rough, if it's $1,000 to move the, move the phone system, literally yeah. the box that runs it, and $1,000 to move the phone service, the wires that Consolidated puts in there, the caller's point was that, that if the town takes the high school building over, they're going to have to put more than that amount of money back in to adding services back. Now, whether that matters or not, right, right. Well, and, and technically, while we're responsible for this building, I don't think we can actually have it without fire safety, which sure. means phone service. Yeah. So I mean, because we are responsible until this deed, this deed, which we own this building. Now at least, at least until September of next year, which is a big change for a lot of us. Let me uh, suggest that you said there are two possible votes on the on the amount you were suggesting, fifteen thousand dollars to yeah. go to the board of selectmen of Rochester uh, for their consideration. I certainly would support that. Uh, the second thing is I don't think we're in any rush to separate the wires. Um, and if, if uh, I, uh, because for one thing, we don't have the value of the assessment of the consultant team. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's any burning issue to separate the wires in okay. September versus May. And if it Good. comes on that we need to do that, we could encumber the monies in May. Uh, to protect those monies beyond the fiscal year and allow us to do it um, um, later that summer of 2022. Now, if it's if it's not spent, that's I need to be billed on it. I yeah. agree with Bill. Uh, well, let's okay. I'll double check that. Patrick, just hold on. Let Bill finish. I double check that because I'm municipal finance 
once you've encumbered it, it's encumbered. And now, if it's a, you need to have a contract. If, uh, yeah, so, right, right. but if you have that, 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 that money doesn't mean it has to be spent by. No, as long as we have a contract. Um, Patrick, next. No, I, I I agree with Bill. I think, um, I, yeah, I, I don't think that we can make the, the Stockbridge residents pay pay to heat the building or anything. But um, I also think that we're a little premature on wanting to separate. The, the phone services considering both buildings are so intertwined and it may not be an issue once the town of Rochester or if the town of Rochester does move forward with with taking the building then it may not be something that really needs to be done or if it does you know I think this is something that maybe we wait and see how the, the town of Rochester moves forward in the next Six months here, and then and then we can we can make a decision how to move forward with those funds. Robert, uh, I can point out that if we need to, we can put a put as one of the articles for the the, the um, next school meeting is to have those funds in a special yeah. fund to carry forward to the next year. You just tell the truth is that the most efficient spending of those funds may may uh, go into the following year and That's we right. just put put that in the, the you know the school has done it in the past the town has done it in the past and the voters are usually uh, have never objected to that as long as you target what that money is being spent for good and it sounds like we only have one vote ahead of us and that is to request um, and this this was a very arbitrary ballpark amount 15,000 um, if you want to raise more we would love it. <laughs> uh, I'd say as much help as you can give us with this, uh, po politically and as far as supporting our promise to to really take this building off the burden of the RSUD. Um, it, it would be a really great show of faith, not being able to have a vote as of yet, I understand that, but if you could come up with this money to really support this, I think there'd be a lot of goodwill around it. Um, so that's we, we will start we will start out uh, as soon as possible to start uh, raising the money uh, and we were already going to launch a capital uh, hello are you am I still here yeah, you're, on. you're on you're on we can hear you yeah we we uh, we have to come up with our matching uh, grant money uh, and we'll just enlarge that and uh, make a uh, start the campaign on that. I do believe there'll be people making larger and some people smaller donations, but it'll be a very sort of good test of the whole process to start that right now. Good. good. So, um, should, should we, we make a motion? Do you want to get any feedback from the, the select board representative here? Uh, Pat, do you have anything you want to add into this? Is she on She doesn't know if she's. Can you all hear me? Um, yes. I really don't have anything to add to any of the discussion that's going on tonight because I will be having my own discussion with um, the committee next Monday night. Um, so your discussion has a bearing on um, my meeting yep. next week. So I'm, I'm really at this point all ears. And uh, that way I can deliver what I know from this meeting to the other select board members. Great, thank you very much. Um, uh, I want to entertain a motion that we're asking. Are we? Do we need a motion for this? Is it, I think a motion would be good. I think a motion think, would be good. So what I'm hearing is that your the motion would be that you're requesting that the administration once again winterize the building. Yeah. Rising the building for 21 22. Correct. And also requesting that is it Envision Rochester? Is that the group you're Well, I think we, Envision Rochester and or the select board raise an amount to of, support. To, of, of not to not less than $15,000 to help defray costs of that heating for that period. So we so moved. Did we hear that? It was recorded. 
It was recorded. Uh, Rick, Rick, you got something? Thank you. Oh, Rick, you're, yeah, you're, you're muted still. Uh, I think Ray has to unmute. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, and I just don't know how that fits in with the uh, need in order to affect the grant to get the permission through to uh, occupy the building through uh, June. If we don't get that, then the grant is voided. Um, so I'm not sure how that ties in. That's I think condition. that's a separate situation, which I was going to remind Ethan about. Yeah, that we need to vote for the extension as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 We will do that. I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. You're right. That's. Yep. Yeah, we got to. We got to do that. Let's get this done first. And the, okay. the idea was that we are going to winterize the high school building. This is the motion on the table. Winterize the high school building for the 21-22 winter time and are requesting that um, the select board of Rochester and or Envision Rochester um, raise an amount not to be less than $15,000 to help support that heating. Um, and that's, and it was seconded by Robert. Is there any discussion on that? Justine? No? No. Patrick? No. Good. Are we ready to vote? Yes. Good. Bill? Uh, yes. Amy? Aye. Yes. Robert? Patrick? Yes. Justine? Yes. Good. And your vote? Yes. yes. So moved. Excellent. Um, second motion will be that the Rochester, um, that the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District extend access, <clears throat> correct? Extend access to the building. What was the date, Rick? Uh, to the end of June 22. To, uh, from April through June of 20, 2022 to Envision Rochester and well, the still, grant. Yeah, yeah, it's to the town because the town is the grant recipient. The town, to the town of Rochester, access. Yes, yeah. that, that was a mess. But so the much. feasibility study. Yeah, yeah the feasibility study. <laughs> For the feasibility. For the feasibility study. Yes. Did we, did we get the idea? Yes. <laughs> so moved. Sorry, what's her name again? Mary, Mariah? Sorry. Sorry, Mariah. <laughs> this is the best. Yeah, I'm second second that. That. So moved. Second it. Thank you. Uh, are we, any discussion? I think this is a good idea. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Robert? Aye. 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 Amy? Aye. Bill? All right. Uh, Patrick? Aye. Justine? Aye. Ethan? Aye. We have it. Woo -hoo! Good right. work. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a Woo -hoo! Very, 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 <laughs> Once we got into this one, I knew we were. We were nice, but we really had to do this yep. before we could address you, Demo. Sorry, Demo. Um, but right. no, we really had to do this work because now this is maybe a viable thing. Um, I wasn't, I really wasn't sure if it was. So, um, you've given us this letter here, um, players access needs. Um, you haven't seen this, so let me just read this out to you, Justine and uh, Patrick. The players theater access needs. The Rochester School Auditorium has occupied an important place in the 42 year history of the White River Valley Players. Most of our major musical and theatrical productions have been performed on that stage. Prior to our using this space, Rochester High School students enjoy performing musicals, comedies, and dramas in this auditorium. It is fine acoustics, excellent seating, with lighting and sound systems updated over the years by the players in the school. Visiting performers and audiences have commented on the high caliber of the auditorium, <clears throat> noting that it's an unusual facility for our rural area. I'm here, this is uh, Jimmo speaking, on behalf of the players as producer of our fall production, Triple Play. This production consists of three short plays enhanced by music and poetry. In the tradition of the players, much of the material in Triple Play was written especially for this production. We plan to present one evening and one matinee performance on October 22nd and 23rd. And we hope to have our rehearsals and performances in the Rochester School Auditorium. While in the past we've paid for custodial hours during the evenings of our productions, we understand that the needs of the facility have changed. We're prepared to pay a fee for heating costs based on the number of hours needed to have the space heated. Besides needing access to the costume room above the stage, 
we would need the stage and music room on the following dates. Proper room access as needed. Proper room is up in, it's in the theater space, for those of you who don't know, it's up a catwalk. Um, the weekend, oh, this is the time they need it, the weekend of the 9th of 10th of October, five hours each day. The weekend of the 16th and 17th October, five hours each day. 18th through the 21st of October, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. each day. Performances Friday, 22nd October, 7.30 p.m. and Saturday, 23rd October, 4 p.m. So there's only six rehearsal days needed? Um, most of the rehearsals will take place off-site. Okay. Six. So, so what you've presented here is the full amount of time you are looking for. for using uh, and, that's, and that includes even gathering, and it's not just the rehearsal time. It, does it give you some time to gather and get people together and yeah. getting out of the space? Yeah. Um, I understanding knowing that space very well, as I've done many product, I've directed many of the productions there. Um, it's not really realistic to turn the heat on an hour before a, per, a rehearsal and expect it to actually be any warm in there. I actually need to keep it warm, pretty much for a period of the week. That you wanted, or the period of time you wanted, starting almost the day before. I noticed it's weekend, so it is. They are back. The weekend. Back. So I think, yeah, we're talking. I don't think it's really five hours each day. I think it's. I think it's more realistic to say it's the days. Okay. I want it for the days, and it's probably starting on the eighth to really keep, get the thing up. I mean, you know, we're not talking <laughs> freezing cold. We're not talking January. Right. Oh, it is October, right? So yeah, it's not, it's, as bad. it's not as bad. So maybe we'd be okay just to turn the heat on that morning and the 16th 17th 18th 1921 um i'm sorry i counted these as days i didn't see the thrill yeah, more than yeah, six days yeah. um is that at least on its own zone do we know yeah. it is it's there's three zones right lyle there's three zones and that is when we heated when we gave suzuki as my understanding wait is the is the, is the shop space in that zone no so it's just the home act lobby Music room and auditorium are on one zone. Yeah, I can, I can ask Brian Boucher to uh, verify all that and to, to make sure that we have the ability to just parse out that area. Yeah, oh. and, and again, we are talking October, which is wonderful that this is in October and not in January. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because the, the heating up for those is going to be a lot less than it would be yes. in January. So we need to come up with a dollar amount. Is what they're looking for. we need well permission permission for them to use it for how much well i mean it's fine with me to just tonight have well um i guess i'm going to have to talk to the board about the cost of it so i guess i need to know something yeah we need to give you a ballpark of what it would cost i mean and it may be a very general number because well um in sept it would i i think we would need to dive into those heating bills a little bit more and look at the amount of pro the amount of oil that was actually used between september and, and december mm -hmm. to be able to kind of come down to what the cost per day is in that i don't know how to do that yeah i'm just you know, trying to think it's like heating degree day you know, units uh, you, also, you also have a rental fee that you have gone with the Green Mountain Suzuki Institute. You may look at what that uh, what that standard rental is. I, I don't know what it is, but that might be a point of reference. Wait, it's a Suzuki special. is a special it's rental. Suzuki is a special rental per head. It's not per per oh, it's, participant. It's, it's not per, per participant. It's not per space. Yeah, it's not um, done in I don't think it's going to cost that much in in October, and I think we should we should be able to do this and work with the players to I mean, be able to make this happen. Yeah. What's the ballpark you were thinking? A thousand dollars for all that time? Five hundred dollars? Can we can we make a ballpark? Right. Well, I was trying to say. Something. Oh, no, well, I'm just saying. You know, your heating degree day units in October are vastly different than January and February. You just don't have yep. to in that much heat energy in October to do what you need to do in February to get the same outcome. Um, yeah. it's, gonna be, uh, it's not going to be a substantial amount of money. Um, maybe just covering the cost of Brian making sure that he can parse out that uh, par part of the building and make sure it operates. Um, it, it's, it's not a lot of money. Do you, 
I mean, it's well, that's why I was saying if you looked at the bill, <clears throat> you could figure out how much per day, uh, how much is used. You know, it's like your car, you figure out how much how many gas mileage yeah, you get in by, you know, gallon. by when you fill up. Can we, can we just do a general number? Um, yeah, but I'm, is 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 um, I mean something between three and five, uh, three three hundred. Does that sound? Does that sound? Much, I'd like to make a motion. To motion to accept for three, <laughs> that we give permission for them to use it for these dates, um, uh, for a uh, um, a rental fee of three hundred dollars total. What's our normal fee? Um. Are we, are we also needing the custodial hours? Of, right. There's a Do we still flat. need that? Right. Um, so that I know we had because we were an operating high school, so we wanted to make sure that everything was back in order for the opening of school the next day. Yeah. I don't so if they take care of it, if you vacuum and you yeah, take care of the, the bathrooms, if you them. take on the bathrooms and everything like that anyway, so that we. We would love to have basically have it look yeah, as we, we left it when we come back. I think that's reasonable. So that we would waive the custodial fee. Does that yeah. make sense to you? So well, waive the custodial I mean, fee and no just have a, using, an electricity. The bathroom the next day. <clears throat> and that was why the custodian was, was right. there yeah. on hand. So. Yeah, I, I also just think it's important to make certain it looks respectable. Yeah, yeah. Right? they will. I know the standards really and they will, they will, and Gemma was impeccable about we, we usually time. left it in better shape. I figured yeah. probably yeah. did. Because <laughs> <laughs> often yeah. we went in after a high school production where it was in. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then we made it beautiful. Um, Justine, you have something to say? Yeah. Um, the I'm not sure if anything's changed since right before Suzuki, but the bathrooms and the plumbing were a concern when we were going to let Suzuki in there. Um, sure. all that's going to be oh, yeah. new for a performance by the players. Uh, I, I'll triple check, but it was all functioning for Suzuki. It was all functioning for Suzuki. Okay. Great. So are we good? I didn't know that. Okay. A motion to grant the players access for specified dates in October um, for, uh, for a cost of $300 toward heating and electricity. Or rental fee. Just rental fee. Rental of 300, $300. I'll move that. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Amy. Um, I should give the new giving names because this woman doesn't know who we are. Um, uh, just again, Bill, Amy, Robert, Ethan, Patrick, and Justine are on the screen. Um, any discussion? There being none, Robert. Hi. Amy. Hi. Bill. Hi. Justine. Hi. Patrick. Aye. Aye, Ethan. Oh, so moved. Congratulations, Gemma. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Thank you. Appreciations for you coming Thank and your you. preparation. Good going. Thank you for your patience as well. I'm excited. All I'm right. Impressed. I'm impressed. We did that. Work. Generator. Oh, okay. Get Lyle <laughs> out of here. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Generator. Get Lyle out of here. Um, so we're at eight. Two eight three. <laughs> Words that are going all over the place here. Eight three stock yeah, generator eight, project. We'll come back to it. Oh, we're gonna come yeah, back. we're gonna come sure. back. Yeah. So just make sure. Keep me honest. Getting, getting another person yep. uh, out of here. Yep. Well, what do you have to tell us about a generator? So uh, they approached me to uh, put that out to bid. So I took what they had from years past as far as um, a proposal, and took all the parts that I liked out of that and then sent it out to several vendors. We got mostly um, people saying they're too busy. I don't know if that was due to COVID or just lack of workers or what, uh, but we put it out to, I wanna say four or five different vendors. And the only uh, person that came back was Brookfield, who was the original uh, provider of the proposal. Uh, the gen that they proposed was um, big enough as we, we discovered to do more than what the school needs. So in anticipation of future electrical loads for um, HVAC equipment that light is likely to, to, to use more electricity, um, we were pretty happy about that. Um, uh, they also um, 
did all of the work for the most part. There's very little that they left out of their proposal, which is, is good because we don't have a lot of staff to, to dig ditches and things like that for, for pipes and so on and so forth. Uh, we went ahead and put in the transfer switch. Uh, we did that because we didn't want to interrupt any school days whatsoever. And so we did that in the summer. Um, and what, whatever generator we choose, we can hook to that transfer switch. Um, but at this point, we're hoping to go with Brookfield's um, quote that you probably have in front of you. Is that an automatic transfer it switch? It will just switch over to yeah. generated yeah. power. Yeah. We looked at it last time, didn't we? Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Um, okay. it, it all, it, we're talking about the, one of the biggest problems right now is getting an underground propane tank buried. The, the provider that we have right now has no interest in burying a tank, um, which I'm not sure exactly what their reasoning is. So we're, we've approached a different vendor for propane who is willing to bury a tank, and we're waiting for a proposal from them. Uh, it's not that big a deal. I guess we would have one vendor for the, the generator, which is you're going to use very little unless there's obviously emergency because it's only going to run when it exercises once a week for a little bit. It's about a 750,000 BTU load for half an hour just to warm the generator up and so on. And then we'll have another vendor for propane for the, the heating units and the kitchen. Um, but we really don't want to go with an above ground tank because it's just unsightly and it's in front of the building um, because of where the generator has to be and, and has to be in proximity of the, the main entrance to the building for the power. Um, so we're making progress, but we really need to, to give uh, Brookfield the go ahead to, to put that unit in and start digging the hole for the propane tank and so on. So that um, digging Putting the tank in below ground is or is not part of the original price quote? Uh, that's really not part of their quote. It's just that's okay. what I recommend for that particular unit is to have a certain size underground propane tank. And the, what they have best, best luck with is uh, CV oil and propane, I believe. And they have no problem. Do we have a ballpark? Do we have a ballpark? 5,000 to bury it? Plus oh, no, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't believe it's going to be. I think you probably lease the tank. It's not going to be, uh, you know, a, a huge number to bury the tank. Um, we haven't seen it, yet, so I really don't want to. to, to the, the, last I, the last Oops. I knew, CV Oil didn't lease an in ground tank. I don't know if that's changed. Say again? Okay. The, the last I knew, maybe which is like a year ago, CV Oil does not lease an in-ground tank only For, above ground. again that's why i haven't seen his proposal i, I know he's willing yep. to put an yep. underground tank in so. I, uh, okay yeah, yeah. Uh, it would definitely have to be purchased if it was from cv oil i know um somebody that i've just recently worked with for a project and and they had the, the best price around for a per uh a purchase of an in-ground tank and they provided the excavator was through junction fuels in Woodstock, so that might be of interest to, to, to look into. Yeah, for comparison's um, sake, yes. Yeah, yeah, correct. Don't get me wrong, I'm I'm pro CV oil all the way. <laughs> but, well, yeah, uh, that, that's a that, that's what they Brookfield indicated that they're they're a very reliable uh, company. So that's what we want. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, could we approve the generator, the Brookfield contract? and then approve the tank um, part of the cost afterwards or that's I don't what I'm trying to need you to approve the tank I need you to approve the, the, generated, the project. generated contract and then approve using your reserve funds to pay for that yeah okay that's all we need to do tonight <laughs> great let's do it <clears throat> did we have, um, uh, uh, I also we have and Patrick do you want to add about you did approve coach the select board Oh yeah. Yeah. So I, I spoke with the select board the other night. Um, it just kind of, you know, brought up the, the scope of the project that we were, our intentions are to move forward tonight. Um, and with that and kind of the timing and everything, I agreed with the select board that it was unrealistic for them to really put like a dollar 
amount on, you know, whether to give us 5,000, 10,000, whatever, as an example, before the end of this budget year was unrealistic um, because it wasn't accounted for and we're at the end of the budget year. But they do want to show their support. They do want to help. And the only way that we could think uh, of a solution that was, you know, made sense uh, was, was for us to go through with, with voting for the install tonight. Um, and then we, the, our, our thoughts were is that the town could pay the annual maintenance costs uh, right. associated with the generator. Um, and, you know, and that, that shows that they're, you know, they, they support it and, and are, are willing to help. So and I, I think that that's fair. And, and they agreed on that or that will need to be decided at their uh, an town annual meeting in the spring? Um, I think it needs, yeah, I think the decision, because basically, like they said, they can't really make a decision until January, until the next budget year. But they, we left the meeting with their support and, and thinking okay. that was, that was the best solution, um, to move forward and that we basically need to approve it tonight and then get back to them and we can then, you know, get something in writing. Um, but we we had a verbal agreement the other night, and we all agreed to to move forward tonight, and, and that they, they do we do have their support. Okay. Tara, can you pull up the uh, bid, please, so that you can read what the total bid was? Just on another note: the the annual maintenance um, that we chose while the unit is uh, under warranty is a yearly visit, I believe. They recommend that after the warranty period is up, that they do it twice, I believe, yearly uh, visit. Yes. Which makes sense to me, obviously, just just so the select board doesn't say, why are we doing two visits now, not just one? Because it, no, and, and I, I went over those those numbers completely okay. with them. Um, yeah, we were, we were very specific about it. Uh, and also, we did agree that the one-time uh, internet monitoring system fee for seven hundred dollars was also a, a, a good idea to move forward with. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I would make a motion. Okay. To approve the the uh, bid of twenty eight thousand six hundred and eighty three dollars. Fifty three. I'm sorry. Fifty three dollars to uh, Brookfield, Brookfield Brookfield service for the installation uh, for purchase and installation of the generator as proposed in their bid to and, be, and to be funded, funded by to be funded, to be funded, funded by, by the reserve the Stockbridge reserve fund Stockbridge building reserve fund to be funded by the Stockbridge <laughs> building reserve fund that's put words in your mouth but there you go yeah, I'll second that any discussion. Uh, I'll take the vote. Justine? Aye. Second. Yeah, we'll take it a second. Okay, yeah, yeah. I just want to be sure. Yeah, she got a second. Uh, What's the... Moved by Robert. Robert, seconded by Bill. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. Aye by Justine. Patrick? Aye. Robert? Trump. Aye. Bill? Yes. Amy? Aye. Ethan? Aye. We have a generator. Good job, guys. Yes. Thank you. Good. Holy smoke, we did a lot of work. We spent a lot of money. We actually, we maybe saved a lot of money. All right. Thanks, Lyle. Thank you, Lyle. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, let's go back to 8-2, yeah. please. Planning for board retreat, because we don't want to put this as the last thing. We have a date. Let's remind everybody of our date. Uh, it is the uh, week from Saturday. Saturday the 18th. Saturday the 18th from 9 to 1. With one, 12 to 1 being a lunch and 9 to 1 be, or 9 to 12 being the meat of our meeting. Um, and we're meeting, I forget, the elementary school. Elementary yes. school in the Rochester. Rochester. In the, <clears throat> yep, that's what we said. Yep, elementary school. Great. Somebody's getting bagels. <laughs> oh, um, right. <laughs> when you and you I said nine, nine in the morning? 9 to 12. 9 to, nine nine to, to 1 okay. total. Because with, with lunch, 
Um, do we know okay. what we're doing for lunch? Most importantly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Forget the whole. <laughs> yeah, the heck with the agenda. What yeah, doing? I mean, I was going to possibly look to pursue our food service to cater. Oh, um, sure. I'm trying yeah, to do more and more of that. I don't know if it's your cook, Wendy, but that the SU food service in general would cater. Oh, um, okay. I'm fine with that. I'm if not, we'll do a fallback. But yeah, I mean, both both at that time, cafe would be open. Um, maybe the Maple Soul would make us a lunch. I don't know. Um, it's part of my could also to maybe... try to put it, keep an influx of our public dollars within the program. Oh yeah, yeah, I um, think that's good. The Four Seasons New York would not be a bad choice either. <laughs> I haven't had a good meal in a long time. What's that? Really, we, we once had a, very, a very retreat at the. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Once had a board retreat at the Fire and Ice. Oh, well, that's pretty go. good. That is really good. Okay. Uh, okay. So the agenda. So we've got this email here. Um, we just some initial thoughts. Initial thoughts, and I know Bill, you have some very clear ideas about what. Um, and this is before when we were doing it prior to a meeting, so we actually gained an hour um, by having it on a Saturday. We gain an hour. Sorry, what? Like another hour in that agenda. To get to put more in. Yeah. Oh, cool. Although okay. we do tend to run long. Um, yeah, we do. Well, you know, we like to chat. I also like to make sure everybody gets a chance for coffee. I just feel like that's, and I know that takes other board chairs, but pump it through. Okay. But um, I think it's important. Um, I like the icebreaker activity. Um, um, board composition strengths. I don't understand. It, it's a protocol. It's, a, it's an SRI protocol. So school reform initiative protocol around looking at as leaders, as board members, what type of leadership you tend to look toward. Like a North is more of a get it done. So the idea would be to start to look at the composition of your board mm -hmm. and what your strengths are so that as you start to possibly look at additional committee work, um, and or special projects that come out of your goal setting, that you have a sense of what board members are you going to look to have take on certain responsibilities. That's nice. Um, that's the concept behind like it. Like, for nice. example, you do not come to me for budget numbers, right? <laughs> but I may run long, but we have a good keep going meeting. You know, we'll get things done. That's my... I see myself. Okay, well, that sounds like a good like activity. A good activity. Sure. Um, <clears throat> now, is missioning, visioning work the same as goal setting that Bill has talked about? I don't know. Bill, what do you think? I'm uh, comfortable with the way it's written. Um, okay. It, mission visioning is, is very broad, but the way Jamie's talked about here, that uh, we try to work at, and define what our board's three major goals would be. And as you know, I'm, I really think goals are a very positive way uh, to, to get action, mm -hmm. to reach success. So I like that a lot. And um, if we have more time, we will too. Um, nice. A couple things that um, struck me are, are three things. One is kind of like board protocol. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are the expectations? How? What are our responsibilities? And if we've got a problem, how do we resolve it? Um, and there's just a bunch of stuff that uh, the, the board members that have been here a long time know about uh, mm -hmm. by memory. But I think for the new members of the board, it's good to discuss that. That if no board member can vote for the board; only through the board can vote and make decisions. Mm -hmm. um, if we're talking about talking to the staff, uh, we need to work through. Um, our chairman and through the superintendent. There's a series of protocols and to the extent that we're aware of them and understand them, yep. I think it's very, very helpful. Another thing um, was worth it is the board's role vis-a-vis uh, -vis the superintendent and the administration. And um, I mean, we're the policy setters, we're the visionaries and everything else. Um, the administration are the ones that are gonna carry it out. And to the extent that we can focus on this is our objective. And then the administration says, okay, if that's the objective and we, we'd like that, here's how we're going to carry out. Here's our strategy to achieve. And so many times the boards I've been with like to get down in the woods and almost play the administrative role. Yeah. And to the extent that we can pull back from that and talk about the bigger issues, I think um, 
I think that's worthwhile as well. So, um, no, I, I like this a lot. Thank you, Jamie, for putting it together. Um, I, I think during that board, board protocol, it'd probably be a good idea to bring in the Vermont League of School Boards or whatever it's called. They have a list of what we do and what we're not mm -hmm. supposed to do. Um, BSPA? Yeah, yeah, BSPA. Yeah, yeah, and they just sent us, yeah. Um, which we have seen before, but I think each board member, yeah, I have even that. the old timers, uh, yeah, just oh, to yeah, kind yeah. of review this in your underlines, no, I going into should. that meeting, because this might generate questions. I didn't understand why this or that. And part of the time we should have just a kind of Q and A uh, freewheeling. Well, um, but that's a that's a very good resource. Um, and just a reminder that we do start the training series at the full board level with the VSBA uh, in September. They're going to be about 30 minute segments. And that's just with the full board? You're <coughs> bringing that down to the. Yeah, room. just for the full board. Okay. But you're all invited and I encourage you to do it. Okay. And do they I mean, to get, get them to come out seven times every month, not no, realistic. No, right, right. No. But to get this about once a month. Well, and, and do they get the announcements? Yeah. The yep. full board gets yep. the announcements. I have to do it as board chairman. I didn't do it all last year, and I have to do it this year. Good. Um, then does this feel like a good agenda for us? Yeah. Board. Um, so icebreaker activity, board composition strengths, mission visioning work. That's the. And I'll send out the protocol ahead of time. Okay. Just so you guys can. And then we'll get board protocol. And it'll be an SRI protocol. And okay. then there's a closing activity, which. I might come up with something that actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. No, watch no. out. Uh, whoa. Hello. Who is Patrick? No, oh, Patrick. Patrick was shaving, I think. <laughs> um, good. Uh, do we need to approve this agenda? No. Uh, we no. we look at it. I'm oh, good. I All think right. we're. I think we're starting to wrap up this meeting. Is what it is. Maybe not. We'll see. Looks good. Thank you. Um, no, thank you. We're good, Justine. Would look to how that sounds. Yeah, that that sounds good. I'm not sure what you're reading from. I don't have. I don't think I um, have that. But it's a, sorry. It was an email that he sent out to just Ethan. Just oh, to me. <laughs> okay. Never mind. It was printed. In no, the I, I did I just send it, it to you. <laughs> no, I sent it. I sent it to everyone at the beginning of the meeting. So it's in your email. Mm -hmm. Oh, I I didn't get it. Anyway, I'm reading it. It sounds fine. What if it's if you I, read it all? Sounds good to me. That's the problem with the art side looking at the group email sometimes is you don't actually know yeah. who's I assume that everyone's always getting it, but if it's on our side, I sent this just to you. Yeah, I know, but I did just send it to everybody and they else got it. just before that. Okay. Good. Patrick, you have any comments about that? No, you did not. I didn't. No. <laughs> well, well, I, did, I sent it to the R side board. I'm not on the Wi Fi here. And there's no service, Oh, so. there you go. Okay. My no problem. Question. Okay, good. Let's move on. Yeah. Um, I think all we have is yes, eight five tuition at religiously affiliated schools. You don't have to decide this tonight unless you want to decide this tonight. Mm -hmm. So there was the Supreme Court yep. at the federal level. There was a case in Montana about um, providing tuition to uh, religiously affiliated schools. The Supreme Court ruled that public tuition dollars, public uh, education dollars can go to fund religiously private independent schools. So if somebody chooses to go. Yeah. They and the go. guidance now from the Agency of Education and their attorneys is that yes, we should be providing tuition, just like you do as a choice town, to religiously affiliate, religious affiliated schools like any other independent approved school. Mm -hmm. the there's this the tuition rate is set by the state like, so it would be up to the state average that's what the yeah, state average right it is so but before you didn't in vermont there was a the lot of the land went to the vermont supreme court and it was that you could not use public tax payer money yep. to then go and pay tuition at a religiously a private religious institution mm -hmm. right we never paid tuition before so this is new yep so I've met with Dina about this. Um, and so there's two ways to go about this, okay? The board can uh, make a motion and approve us paying up to the state average. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's that, uh, there's that approach. 
Four others approached, and some of you may have saw from the VSBA that just came out. We don't have policy on this yet, so I'm bringing this to every board because we're going to start getting bills soon. To send out a letter and that the administration would adopt a procedure, meaning Tara and I, to require each uh, religious affiliated school, independent school, to designate what percentage of that, that their tuition is going to fund the religious teachings of the school. And we would withhold that percentage of their tuition. What Dina made clear to Tara and I is to know that she believes that that will be litigated soon if we withhold it. Right. So that we are potentially opening ourselves up to litigation. Now, if we decide to pay it, the ACLU may come after us. Exactly. Yeah. So either way, we could be opening ourselves up to litigation. The union, they very advocate the free speech and separation of church and state. So yeah, I just I think we need to go in eyes wide open. I don't necessarily need a decision tonight. I would say if we go the first rate, pay it. If the ACLU, it's not the ACLU is probably not going to come after just us. Correct. They're going to come after a lot of other people. We all do it. Yes. It's a class action. It's yes. much the spreads out the liability. Visbit would represent I, multiple. I really that feels. I mean, I understand the principle. There's another there district in the SU that did approve. I don't, that doesn't have to, you don't, that doesn't mean yeah. we all have to do the same, but just, you know, Granville Hancock did weigh this two months actually, mm -hmm. and they decided to pay up to the state average. Yeah. I, I would be inclined to, to follow that route based on which side the litigation might happen on. So, um, uh, but we don't need to, to I don't know. I always like if it's something quick and easy, we all agree, let's get it done and not have to bring it up again. Um, Justine, how do you feel about this? Not quite sure. I'm just thinking about it rapidly. Um, oh, well, we, I, I'm not if, sure. it, if, it, if it turns out that we're not decided, we won't, we'll put it off till next time. Yeah, I think, it can be a few I think this is I can a good one for right her to wrap her head. I think this is a good one for you to wrap your hand around and and advise us. I think this is your strength. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. maybe we maybe we should um come back to this next. That's fine. Yeah, yeah like that's I, yeah. there's two uh, there's two options here, right? Yeah. I don't think there's a necessarily a right or wrong. I think it's weigh, weighing the risk. Either. Yeah. And we're yeah. not gonna it's not gonna be a problem if we wait a month. It's not yeah. like there's any bills banging on our door right now. Well, we're going to start getting them soon. But uh, what I've said to Tara is our procedure around paying tuition is going to be that we would only pay one semester anyway. So even if you would put a percentage on it afterwards, it's not like we couldn't do that. Yeah. Okay. I guess one of the questions I'd be curious next month, if we, and I would like to see it postponed to the great, to the October uh, agenda for Jamie and Tara is, you know, how much administrative time would be involved in trying to separate and, yeah, and exactly. evaluate um, the religious time and then trying to put those into dollars and to me that's um, one thing we don't have a lot of is administrative time at our upper echelons mm -hmm. and so um and, and that's an important offset for me because his number one goal here is quality education and it starts at the top with your time to put on the important thing so and i'll ask kind of that Question mm -hmm. next next month. Plus, if we table it, we might get out of here before nine. Yeah. Well, can, can uh, we, can we ask Dina questions? Um, I guess you know the question is like weighing, you know, what the outcome may be, what what Dina's prediction and you know litigation costs. I mean, it's kind of like a how you want to play the game situation if, if you're going to be in litigation either way. Um, is there an opportunity? I, I guess I could say this: if you if we got litigated directly, right, we got named for not paying tuition, then more likely than not, Dina's going to represent us, and that's coming out of your pocket. Yeah. If we're in a class action suit, we're going to kick it to Visbit, and you pay insurance right. for them to protect you, right? And then they're going to hire an attorney like Pietro Lynn, who's right. going to represent multiple districts. Like you said, it's going to be. Yeah, almost nationwide. At some point, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. is going right. to be litigated. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Already it already probably is. Right, just and it's going to be things. it's going to be big, and so we're just a small stack yeah. in the bigger. I I I duck this one. I I mean, if, if we're all good, passing it off to next time when yeah. we're fresh. Yeah. Let's do it, Patrick. You good with that? Yes. 
Good. I think we're all agreed. Great. Let's table this until next time. And we can table this too. Move to the table of <laughs> religious affiliated schools. Do you have a second on that? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Table aye. to the October. Aye. Table to the October meeting. Great. Public comment. Do we have anybody left? Did we got oh, rid of music people? teacher. Oh, we have what? Oh, music New teacher. Hires. New hires. New hires. Must be having Oh my gosh. Sorry. Sorry. This is actually really great news. This will be. This is such good news. Not so we have extended an offer to Mary Hellman to be our music teacher in both Rochester and Stockbridge School. She comes to us after a year in Rutland City School. Are you having trouble hearing, Justine? Yeah, I couldn't hear her the name. I'm not sure who it is. Yep, sorry. Uh, Mary Hellman is our new music teacher for Rochester and Stockbridge Schools. She comes to us from Rutland City Schools after a year as their long-term sub and in our music position and then Prior to that, she um, has worked several jobs, including engineering and construction and a bunch of different areas, but has a music degree oh, wow. in her undergrad. So I move that. Um, and does and she have a teaching great, show, or is that going to need to be waiting? She'll be on a licensure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and there was a good quote from them when they recommended her, Rutland Town. Oh, yes. The, they, both principals, because she was in two schools, um, said that, never in their career, and they've been in it for a while, had they not had problems in music classes and actually had kids requesting to go to music class. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I met her the, yes. met her the other day. Um, and <laughs> while, they're, while they're, I was so psyched because of how I found out is while they came home, they said, so what did you do today? And they said, oh, we had music. And I was like, what? I didn't know we had a music teacher. Yeah, and he said he had a great class. So I was very psyched. Do we need to accept that? Yep. Uh -huh. Uh, move to accept the new hire for music teacher of Mary Holman. Holman. I move. Second. Seconded by Robert. Moved by Bill. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Excellent. We have a public comment. Do we have any public left? I do not see any. I don't think I've ever gotten to the end of a meeting since I've been a school board member and not had a public letter. Quite, quite, quite. Sorry, sorry, I'm not supposed to do that. Or but... somebody gets home. No. So we welcome public comment. Of course we you're welcome, welcome, but it is a nice. I'm, I'm happy. No, it means I think we're doing our job. Or we bored them to tears. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Bored them to tears. <laughs> sorry, that was uncharacteristic of me, but I carry a little bit of the trauma I know of the last two years in my body from the work we've done here. And anybody out there knows that who's been at the meetings. Good. Um, we are now at future agenda items. I think we have, yeah. we'll get an update about how much the propane tank is going to cost. We'll talk about religious schools. Um, <laughs> but I think we've made some uh, really good decisions tonight. I'd love like to hear a little bit more oh, about and we'll the outdoor. Sorry. No, go for it. I think I was just about to say the same thing. I would like to hear more about the new outdoor program and, and what Amy's doing and Yes. What's good. going on and yeah, what we're going for? Yeah, I think pre Amy would be. Could we get Amy to give a presentation at we this point? Is we it too early? Yeah. I'd love to hear that. Thank you. Um, also, we're going to have agenda item your wish list for outdoor spaces. Oh, we're done. Great. Great. <laughs> I like big writing, stars <laughs> all over it. Yeah. No, dream list. Not often, I guess. We want a dream list. <laughs> this is what we should be able to do. I don't think it's a dream. I think it's a reality. Yeah. Just yeah. Put the numbers and the uh, we make it happen. We have to add the possibility of talking about goals. Um, well, we've had our um, we're going to be doing that at the retreat. Yeah, but to, to, it's very likely <laughs> that we'll, they'll, if there's interest in the board to pursue, and I'm talking about academic achievement goals. Um, for our students for this fiscal year, mm -hmm. um, I think there would be likely follow up with this board and with the supervisory union board. So I'd like to just kind of re possibly reserve it and before you finalize the agenda, if you're comfortable with that. No, um, I think uh, that's we'll all. put our goals discussion of our goals. And we're going to do that in the retreat because we're going to be talking yeah. about focusing on that. And if there's a thumbs up, that this is one of the goals you want to pursue as a board. I'm interested because I think you can't only do academic achievement goals for a single school. You need to do it supervisory wide. 
Um, so I think if we're interested in that, would would also need to pursue it through Jamie through the it, uh, the SU board. Is there an SU board retreat? There's not. I mean, so just so you know, Bill, the SU goals that were adopted by that board in their continuous improvement plan are those three goals you keep seeing us report out. Yeah. MTSS, yeah. proficiency based learning, yeah. and interdependence. As far as speaking to what is the criteria for measuring that around success, that's something that the SU board could engage in. Uh, and I, I hope that when I facilitate it for you, what I've done with other boards is they've started to put some meat on what does that mean for our district? You can have an umbrella of creating a comprehensive system of supports. But what? How are you going to measure the outcomes of that, right? Well, and we've, so, got, we've got state mandated outcomes, and we test all over the place. And I'll show you a graph that I've got that isn't meant to be necessarily for presentation, but uh, you'll get very clearly what I'm talking about. It's something that um, it, 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 I think is very logical for the SU board to consider and giving you guidance moving forward. Um, and I'm Why don't you share it. that with Kathy and I? That would be the right yeah, means. Yeah, yeah, and I'd like to share it with uh, Ethan. Well, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Just real briefly, uh, when we were talking about protocols, something came to mind is uh, when we were talking about sharing, I mean, people who have gone through a rather divisive mm -hmm. uh, couple of years and new board members, it would be perhaps uh, very useful to uh, examine what, what were the best practices for dealing That's with a, really good idea. a very, with, with very yeah. controversial meetings. That was a really, yeah. good, a really good idea because yeah. we have learned a lot. We have learned an enormous amount. And, yeah. and, and it's not like we didn't have controversy with when I was on, but it was a, oh, different, yeah. a different form. And it'll come back, but right now we seem to be in but, a, Time where people are trusting us a little. But what bit. we've learned, there's no no reason that the new yeah. board members need to relearn it themselves. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, that's, that's, no, I think in that's, talking honestly right about on. mistakes that we made. Right on. The yeah. previous, you know, the previous iteration of the board, I think we made some real mistakes. We lost touch with our community. So yeah, let's talk about that. Can we add that to the agenda? And squeak in sometime in there. Uh, what is that? At the retreat. Right? At the retreat. Yeah. yeah. We're at a whole new direction, new leadership, new, yep. Yep. new, new, new. Um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move. Second. All in favor. All right. All right. Thank you all Bye. very much. Thank you all.